Hello everyone. Welcome to Guidance IS and today we are going to cover current affairs for the third week of May. And uh, as we always do, the first subject would be polity, so let's just directly get into it. Can you uh, tell me that what is the similarity between these three personalities? Here as you can see is the De uh, Derek O'Brien uh, TMC leader. He is uh, Roger Binney, a famous cricketer and uh, he is a, a very famous personality, Ruskin Mond. So, can anybody think of uh, a common thing uh, between these three personalities? Yeah, it is this, that all three of them are Anglo-Indians and that, that is what are today's topic also. So, today we are going to read about Anglo-Indians. What is the recent context abhi recently kya hua hai regarding Anglo-Indians? We'll understand but before that we'll also understand what exactly Anglo-Indians are and what are the constitutional provisions uh, present uh, in our Indian constitution regarding them. So first thing first, recently what had happened, Delhi High Court has ordered the centre to file its submission in a response to petition seeking restoration of Anglo-Indian representation. This is to be underlined here because uh, before some time, inka jo representation tha, uh, usko wapas le liya gaya tha. Now there is a petition which has been filed to restore that, to restore their representation in the parliament and of course in the, uh, at the state level also, right? But so, this is the present context. But before we get into, you know, the polity part of it or the constitutional provisions, we must know ki iska background hai kya, ye kahan se originate hua hai. Also, what exactly do we understand by Anglo-Indians? So, we all know at the time of EIC, East India Company, right? So what East India Company or the British government used to encourage, they used to encourage the marriages between the British officers and the Indian lady, right? So from there, so that, that is precisely the origin of uh, this, entire, uh, this entire topic. And from there, this word originated, which is Anglo-Indians. Anglo, which is Anglo means, as the name indicates, Anglo means European and Indian means Indian. <clears throat> females we are talking about, right? So, I'll just read it for you. Though we have understood where exactly has it originated from, but this has been defined as per the article 366 too. We'll understand it, don't, don't worry. But what exactly is it? It is a person whose father or any of whose other male progenitors in the male line or was of European descent, but who is a native of India, right? Okay, now that we've understood who, ang uh, who are Anglo-Indians, we also need to understand ki inki representation ke baare mein humne sabse pehle kab baat kari. So, to give them representation or a legal status, whatever you call it, we talked about it in Act of 1935 for the first time, right? Inki representation ke baare mein 1935 ke act mein pehli baar baat kari gai. Okay, then what happened? Though the reservation was not given to them uh, at, th in, at, that, at that particular moment, reservation we gave them in 1950, right? 1950 May we finally gave them a legal state, or not not the legal status, but the representation in the in the houses. All right. But what was exactly the clause, or what were the uh, those provisions which were mentioned in Act of 1950? 1950 ke Act mein ye likha tha that they will be given a representation up to 70 years. So, ab se leke 70 years tak inko hum representation denge, which is 1950 se jo 70 years hai would be 2020. So, 2020 tak unko ek reservation provided thi, and it was also written in 1950 ka provisions only that after those 70 years or after 2020 the parliament would decide if the representation should be continued or should be seized right but now what has happened 2020 may unki representation ko seize kar liya gaya hai because of a lot of reasons because uh, uh, the parli i mean uh, the government is of the opinion that they are not they're not in that much number that they need a uh, uh, a representation but again there are certain arguments uh, uh, against this also we'll come to the arguments also we'll compute come to the entire dispute but before that let us see what are the what the constitution has to say about it okay so constitution may there are few articles which deals with anglo indians the first one being 334 article 334 wherein it says that reserving the seat for sc st and the nomination of anglo indians something uh, which should be noted down that 
334 does not only talk about so it is not exclusively for uh, anglo indians it also talks about reservation for sc st classes and as well as for anglo indians but there is a difference there is a difference between the reservation provided to the sch scheduled caste and tribes and the reservation provided to the anglo indians what is the difference the difference is ki inko jo reservation milta hai sc st kuch reservation mil raha hai that is based upon the that is a elected uh, you know uh, representation yahan par these people are getting represented uh, or you can say this is a nominated one right this is the difference between the two the two classes all right uh, and representation where of course the lok sabha and the state assemblies so this is one provision you need to remember apart from that there are other two provisions which i want all of you to remember regarding anglo indians the first one is article 330 article 331 which talks about giving them representation in the lok sabha theek hai in the lok sabha lok sabha mein representation ki baat kari gayi hai lok sabha the representation of whom anglo indians i'm talking about right but what exactly this article says this article says that if president feels agar president ko lagta hai that they are not adequately represented uh, in the parliament so president can nominate two members from their community right so president would be the authority here when it comes to article 331 and and giving them a representation in lok sabha so president if he feels that they are not what is the condition the condition also you have to remember that if they are not adequately represented so not adequately represented is the condition on which the uh the representation would be given adequately represented right so this is the condition jis pe diya jayega and how many members uh, the president can nominate two members right now the next article is article number 333 which is again giving reservation to the anglo indians but here there is a difference from article 333 uh, 331 which uh, and in 333 what it says ki vidhan sabhas mein और एट स्टेट लेवल आई एम टॉकिंग अबाउट विधानसभा में इनको रिजर्वेशन दिया जाएगा बट दैट रिजर्वेशन हु वुड बी दी अथॉरिटी टू गिव दैट रिजर्वेशन एट द विधानसभा और द स्टेट लेवल द गवर्नर वुड बी हैविंग दिस अथॉरिटी सो गवर्नर वुड बी द वुड बी द अथॉरिटी इन चार्ज हु कैन नॉमिनेट अगैन नॉमिनेट नॉमिनेट right so this nomination and election this differentiation you always have to remember he can nominate how many members one member remember a uh, governor can only nominate one member wherein the president can nominate two members right for anglo indian communities and again on what basis on what grounds the same grounds if they are if governor feels that he uh, that that the anglo indian community they are not adequately represented right so the condition remains same in both the cases but the authorities are different the number of nominations are different all right so these two articles also you have to remember along with article number 334 right okay now the next question that what is the entire dispute or what are the arguments against the removal of this provision okay since we have taken their uh, the representation what exactly uh, is the argument or what, i mean anglo indian community ka is par kya stand hai actually anglo indian communities they are saying that you have counted us on the basis of 2011 census right aur uske basis pe the government has come up with a data wherein it says there are around 296 or around 300 anglo indian members in our country so they're not like uh, they are not so much in number that they need a representation theek okay? hai wherein the anglo indian community says that no this number is not right you have calculated it only wrong so the numbers are all uh, not right we are thousands in th we are thousands in number or maybe more or maybe, maybe uh, more than that so this is precisely they have put uh, as their argument uh, to you know to gain that representation back so i hope this entire thing is clear to you now and the entire topic the entire dispute so moving ahead with our next topic up next we have pradhan mantri awas yojana urban pradhan mantri awas yojana urban or rural hamare paas do components hai here we will be understanding why it is mentioned in news uh, in the recent days although ye kafi news mein hota hai but uh, recent what is the context we'll understand then we'll also understand what are some of the components of this particular scheme and uh, what are what what exactly this uh, mission is trying to address 
okay so the context is the center has committed 2.01 lakh crore for uh, the scheme of which rupees 1.1 lakh crore has been released and 1.10 lakh crore has been spent okay so i don't think these figures you need to remember for your examination point of view but definitely you have to know the objective the aims and what are the uh, you can say uh, uh, the status what is the status of any particular scheme if the, it is very important okay so uh, about the scheme law uh, ministry aapko hamesha yaad rakhni hai if there is any scheme ministry you have to remember upsc directly ask about the ministry kai bar unhone pucha bhi hai ek bahut simple question hota hai but at times we get confused in that simple question only so make sure ki jo aapke uh, low hanging fruits hain wahan par aap apne uh, marks deduct na karwaye so ministry of housing uh, and urban uh, po poverty alleviation is uh, the ministry behind this particular uh, scheme right 2015 se ye uh, hai hamare yahan par right what exactly it aims at sabse pehle sabse pehle we all know it aims at providing providing what housing to all till uh, you know uh, uh, you can say housing to all kab tak 2022 tak 2022 tak sabke paas ghar hona chahiye that is what this uh, uh, particular scheme talks about right so some of the missions uh, it is addressing is slum rehabilitation slum rehabilitation matlab jitne bhi log slum areas mein rehte hain unko humne achhi tarike se rehabilitate karna hai uh, uh, by taking the help of private players or private developers second it says credit link subsidies also they will be providing so that people can afford a house then again affording houses again they will be providing certain subsidies subsidies taki ek affordable housing ka jo dream hai can be uh, can become can become real right 2022 is the uh, deadline we have decided this for so 2022 why because uh, this is also uh, this is also our uh, azadi ka amrit mahotsav going 75 years of indep indep independence hamara hone wala hai so yeah that is again one of the reasons behind uh, giving this uh, 2022 as the year which is again going now some of the features some of the more features you can remember about when it comes to urban yojana pradhan mantri uh, uh, awas yojana urban first is हाउसिंग यूनिट सबको मिलने वाला है वेर इन वॉटर किचन इलेक्ट्रिसिटी एंड टॉयलेट विल बी देर दीज अगेन दीज आर द फेसिलिटीज विल बी प्रोवाइडेड टू टू ईच एंड एवरी हाउस होल्ड जो भी इसके तहत बनेंगे ओके नेक्स्ट इज वुमेन एम्पावरमेंट वुमेन एम्पावरमेंट हाउ वुमेन एम्पावरमेंट बिकॉज जो यू नो घर किसके नाम पे होगा सो दिस इज समथिंग दे हैव एडेड एज अ प्रोविजन दैट एनी यू नो यू कैन से अडल्ट वुमन और या फिर जॉइंट जॉइंटली किसी के नाम पे या फिर अगर कोई अडल्ट फीमेल है उस uh, उस फैमिली में उसके नाम पर ये घर होगा दैट इज वाई इट इज अ वेरी गुड स्टेप आई फील टूवर्ड्स वुमेन एम्पावरमेंट सेकेंड इज बेटर क्वालिटी ऑफ लाइफ फॉर अर्बन पुअर सो दीज दीज काइंड ऑफ स्कीम्स बेसिकली वी नो आर फॉर आर फॉर अर्बन पुअर्स ओनली तो काफ़ी यू नो टू प्रोवाइड दैम बेटर क्वालिटी ऑफ लाइफ बेटर क्वालिटी ऑफ लाइवलीहुड दीज काइंड ऑफ स्कीम्स आर देर सिक्योरिटी ऑफ टेन योर बट अलॉन्ग विद दैट फिजिक एडिकेट फिजिकल एंड सोशल इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर भी हम प्रोवाइड कराएंगे अंडर दिस स्कीम दीज आर फ्यू ऑफ द फीचर्स जो आप याद रख सकते हैं टू कोट इन योर मेन्स एग्जामिनेशन अप नेक्स्ट वी हैव अ वेरी डिस्प्यूटेड टॉपिक आई वुड से काफ़ी डिस्प्यूटेड टॉपिक है and uh, this is uh, like i say it's 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 a it's a eight letter word a very complex word religion anything which is related to religion is highly disputed these days in our country so is uh, the uh, the case with this segment which is gyanwapi uh, case jo hum kafi time se news mein sunte aa rahe hain what is our today's topic yahan par we will be understanding each and every aspect of places of worship act 1991 we will be understanding what this act is all about and how is it related with gyanwapi masjid dispute okay this you can see here is gyanwapi uh, masjid dispute so this is the masjid and these are some of the uh, you can say uh, pillars jo ki aisa 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 represent karte hain ki yahan par koi temple tha pehle but again we will not get into uh, the politics of it we will stick to our examination perspective jahan par hum iske constitution provisions iske uh, dono sides ke jo bhi views hain un, un pe focus karne ki zyada koshish karenge so first thing first let us see 
कॉन्टेक्स क्या है वी वी यू ऑल मस्ट हैव हर्ड ऑफ दिस कॉन्टेक्स आई एम श्योर दिस वॉज वेरी वेरी मच इन न्यूज सो देर वॉज एन अपील अगेंस्ट द वीडियो सर्वे ऑफ वाराणसी ज्ञान वापी मोस विच विल बी एंड दिस दिस विल बी हर्ड बाई द सुप्रीम कोर्ट वॉट इज एग्जैक्टली द इशू इशू क्या है सो फॉर दिस इशू टू अंडरस्टैंड द इशू यू नीड टू गो बैक टू द हिस्ट्री हमें औरंगजेब के टाइम पे जाना पड़ेगा एंड 1669 वाज़ द ईयर व्हेन इट इज इट इज सेड कि 1669 में एट द ऑर्डर ऑफ औरंगजेब औरंगजेब के ऑर्डर पे देर वॉज अ टेम्पल एक्चुअली एट दिस पोजिशन जहां पर आज के टाइम पे मोस्ट इज प्रेजेंट राइट देर वॉज अ टेम्पल और औरंगजेब के कहने पे उसको डिमोलिश करा दिया गया राइट right? डिमोलिश करा दिया गया बट आफ्टर फ्यू यू नो फ्यू ईयर्स और आफ्टर आफ्टर दैट सवाए जय सिंह टू विच यू ऑल मस्ट बी नोइंग इज हु इस्टेब्लिश जयपुर ऑल्सो इन्होंने उसी के पास और यू कैन से एडजसेंट टू दिस साइट जिसकी हम अब बात कर रहे हैं द डिस्प्यूटेड साइट आई एम टॉकिंग अबाउट तो इसी के इस डिस्प्यूटेड टेरिटरी के एडजस्टेंट में ही ही कंस्ट्रक्टेड और टेम्पल राइट एंड द टेम्पल फेमसली इज नोन एज काशी विश्वनाथ मंदिर और काशी विश्वनाथ टेम्पल राइट काशी विश्वनाथ टेम्पल राइट now you will ask you okay then what is the dispute the dispute is that the hindu devotees are claiming that that the original site where the mosque is present right now is not the is 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 not the site which originally was you know which which was originally uh, uh, belongs to the masjid or the mosque yahan par mandir tha pehle right it was not the mosque which were origin originally present here it was mandir okay this is the dispute going on between the two two groups two religious groups okay all right so now that we have understood the 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 dispute there is one thing uh, you must you all must understand which is the constitutional provisions or the polity part of it okay constitutional provisions samajhne ke liye we need to understand about this act the act of 1991 in a very very simple word i'm going to tell you so what happened in 1991 during a uh, narsimha rao government what happened they actually came up with a proposal or or you can say not just a proposal they came up with a decision wherein they decided a date and that date was 15th august 15th of august 1947 which is our independence day right they decided ki 15 august 1947 ko koi bhi building if 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 that particular building is a temple will will be considered as temple forever and if that particular uh, building is a mosque will be considered as mosque forever or if suppose is a church will be considered as church if it is a gurudwara will be considered as gurudwara so this was the date which was decided राइट कि फिफ्टींथ ऑगस्ट के बाद आई मीन फिफ्टींथ ऑगस्ट को इफ दैट बिल्डिंग इज मंदिर विल बी मंदिर मस्जिद विल बी मस्जिद गुरुद्वारा विल बी गुरुद्वारा ओके दिस वॉज डिसाइडेड राइट सो नाउ यू ऑल मस्ट बी थिंकिंग कि ओके फिफ्टीन ऑगस्ट नाइनटीन फोर्टी सेवन को तो इट वॉज मॉस्क द ज्ञान वापी मॉस्क राइट सो वॉट इज द डिस वॉट इज वॉट इज द प्रॉब्लम हम हम लोग क्यों यू नो वाई द हिंदू डिवोट इज अ क्लेमिंग इट टू बी अ मंदिर देन इफ द एक्ट ओनली से इज दैट इट वॉज अ मोस्क देन इट शुड बी राइट बट वी विल कम टू दोज आर्ग्यूमेंट्स ऑल्सो दैट वाई दे आर क्लेमिंग इन 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 अ बिट बट दिस पॉइंट इज वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट फॉर यू ऑल टू अंडरस्टैंड सो एज आई हैव टोल्ड यू द 1991 नाइनटी वन एक्ट से इज दैट नो पर्सन शेल कन्वर्ट एनी प्लेस ऑफ वर्शिप ऑफ any religious denom uh, of any religious denomination into one of a different denomination or section like i've told you you can't convert a temple into a mosque a mosque into a temple or temple into a gurudwara or whatsoever right you can't do that if it if it was uh, like it will remain what it was on 15th of august 1947 right the the act is clear to you i hope now there are certain exceptions also to it there are certain exceptions also to it what are those exceptions the first actually there is one biggest exception the biggest exception was given to babri masjid uh the babri masjid 
right it was given to babri masjid now you must ask or you might ask that why this exception was given to babri masjid theek hai 1991 ke act se bahar rakha gaya babri masjid case ko because it was i it was uh, kept aside i feel because of the political reasons because it was a very sensitive topic that was uh, that was uh, i think the 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 reason why it was kept out of it out of the act okay now there are two three things before coming to the uh, criticism and uh, more of the arguments yeah there are two two three things i would want all of you to go through so one exception we have read exception we have read which is babri masjid babri masjid again there was another exception and for that for for that exception you need to understand section 4 clause 2 I will also tell you what section four clause one is, but section four clause two, हम पहले देख लेते हैं, because it also deals with the exception. What this exception says, this exception says कि if any building comes under the definition of ancient monuments, right? If any building comes under the definition of ancient monuments right that building will be will be covered under the act of what asi which is archaeological survey of india or in other words it will be archaeological survey india's responsibility it will be the responsibility of this body to protect that body only to protect that body you have to remember ki even asi does not have the power to change it into some other other character or change it or change a mandir into mosque but their only authority the only authority they have is to protect that particular site all right so this is another exception you have to remember when it comes to sex, uh, when it comes to the entire topic now what was section 4 clause 1 now that we have dealt with uh, uh, section 4 uh, clause 2 section 4 clause 1 actually we have already discussed it again talks about that date we decided which is 15th of august 1947 jiske baad we cannot change the character of any particular site theek hai jo hai wo wahi rahega so these this is the these are the constitutional provisions jo aapko yaad rakhne hain and very important for our examination perspective too all right so why what is the criticism around it and why it has been criticized so much there of course since hindu devotees are opposing it or hindu devotees are demanding it ki uh, there was a mandir and the mandir should be there now theek hai since the hindu community is uh, is is doing all of that they are also saying the hindu devotees i'm talking about they are also saying that it is against the constitutional provisions also the constitutional articles also especially article number 32 which 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 calls for enforcement of the enforcement of the fundamental rights and not just this it is also against the article 25 and 26 which deals with the religion right so they are of the view that this particular uh, you know what 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 the act of places of worship act of 1991 actually this particular act is against the constitution only so we must amend this act only right so this particular community is demanding ki wo act hi galat hai और एक्ट के जो भी प्रोविजन हैं, विच इज की फिफ्टींथ ऑगस्ट वाला जो प्रोविजन है उसको हमें अमेंड कर देना चाहिए बिकॉज दिस एक्ट इट सेल्फ इज अगेंस्ट दी फंडामेंटल राइट ऑफ अटीजन राइट दिस वॉज दी दिस वॉज दी यू नो देर आर्ग्यूमेंट ओके आई होप द एंटायर टॉपिक इज क्लियर टू यू नो राइट सो एंड दैट इज दैट इज इन फॉर यू टू रिमेम्बर फॉर एग्जामिनेशन परस्पेक्टिव Moving ahead, up next we have integration of Ishram portal and One Nation One Ration Card scheme. Recently, uh, there uh, we have seen the integration between the two important schemes and uh, uh, the process of integration of uh, these two. 
uh, these two, uh, the Eastrom portal of the Ministry of Labor and Employment with one, one uh, nation, one ration card, we have seen the first question which might are uh, which which are which might arise to anybody's mind would be what was the exact need of it hame iski zarurat hi kyu padi actually a comparison of location data with with permanent address data on ishram shall help it will help kya karne mein it will help identify migrant workers with ishram theek hai ishram ko uh, is puri पूरे टॉपिक uh, को इस पूरी लाइन को समझने के लिए हमें पहले ये समझना पड़ेगा दैट व्हाट ई श्रम पोर्टल इज ऑल अबाउट एंड व्हाट दिस वन नेशन वन राशन कार्ड इज ऑल अबाउट ई श्रम पोर्टल द श्रम इज समथिंग रिलेटेड टू वर्कर ओके सो दिस इज बेसिकली रिलेटेड टू या सो दिस इज बेसिकली रिलेटेड टू ई श्रम पोर्टल विच बिलोंग्स टू वी हैव ऑलरेडी डिस्कस दैट ऑल दो वी इट बिलोंग्स टू मिनिस्ट्री ऑफ लेबर एंड एम्प्लॉयमेंट एंड वॉट इट एग्जैक्टली डील्स विद डील्स विद इट डील्स विद विद अनऑर्गेनाइज वर्कर्स तो अनऑर्गेनाइज वर्कर्स के लिए ये पोर्टल बनाया गया है एंड वॉट एग्जैक्टली दिस पोर्टल ऑल अबाउट ये एक नेशनल डेटा बेस है ऑफ अनऑर्गेनाइज वर्कर ठीक है उनकी सारी इन्फॉर्मेशन इट्स लाइक अ डेटा बेस लाइक एवरी 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 इन्फॉर्मेशन विल बी देर एंड वॉट वी आर ट्राइंग टू डू वी आर ट्राइंग टू इंटीग्रेट दीज टू स्कीम्स एंड द नीड वी हैव ऑलरेडी डिस्कस वाई एग्जैक्टली वी आर डूइंग इट बट वट वट ऑल कम्स अंडर द अनऑर्गेनाइज वर्कर्स दैट कुड बी अ कंस्ट्रक्शन वर्कर कुड बी अ माइग्रेंट वर्कर या फिर गिग प्लेटफॉर्म वर्कर्स हो सकते हैं जैसे सर्विस डिलीवरी वाले जो होते हैं could be a street vendor could be your domestic worker in your domestic house or your domestic help whatever you call it then it could be a agriculture worker and a, and other than them it can be any other any other organized worker right okay now this was about shram portal ab thoda sa jaan lete hain about one nation one ration card again since this is basically to give one nation one ration card that was basically meant for migrant workers who migrate from one place to another in search of work so that was meant for the uh, for the migrant workers so that the individual who migrated from one place to another and his or her family also they both can get subsidized food right anywhere in the country right anywhere in the country you have to remember okay and how exactly it can be done so for that you need to visit a pos a uh, point of sale enabled ration shop during whatever your working hours is and then you need to share your aadhar number okay or ya fir aadhar cd ration card bhi aapko milta hai you can share any of uh, any of them and then you need to undergo aadhar based biometric authentication like you do like it happens in uh, in in uh, any normal circumstances and then finally you receive your nfsa food grain quota nfsa is national food security act and the entire mission also comes under national food security act of which your 2013 a very important act has been asked by upsc earlier as well so uh, it comes under national food security act 2013 this also you can remember all right so that was about integrate integrating these two schemes okay up next we have yeah next we have article 142 again a very important very uh, debatable topic okay again it, it was a controversial one was there uh, was there in the news and it keeps coming in the in the news okay it in short words if you want to know the entire summary of article 142 in one line so article 142 actually deals with or actually gives certain extra power to the supreme court of our country okay that's what you can that, that's how you can remember it in one line and in, in, in a very lucid language okay uh हम डिटेल में भी इसको जानेंगे बट पहले उससे पहले कॉन्टेक्स्ट समझ लेते हैं एस टू वाई एग्जैक्टली वाई वी आर रीडिंग दिस नाउ ओके सो रिसेंटली वॉट हज हैपन सुप्रीम कोर्ट हैज इन्वॉल्व इट्स इट्स एक्स्ट्रा ऑर्डिनरी पावर दिस इज टू बी अंडरलाइन हियर दैट इट गिव्स एक्स्ट्रा ऑर्डिनरी पावर टू द सुप्रीम कोर्ट दैट्स वॉट आई हैव जस्ट टोल्ड यू दैट इट इज इट इज एम्पावरिंग द सुप्रीम कोर्ट ऑफ आर कंट्री आर्टिकल वन फोर्टी टू टू डू अ कंप्लीट जस्टिस इफ इफ द सुप्रीम कोर्ट फील्स कि किसी भी केस में कोई कंप्लीट जस्टिस नहीं मिला है सो द सुप्रीम कोर्ट टेक्स द अथॉरिटी टू गिव द कंप्लीट जस्टिस टू दैट पर्टिकुलर केस और अभी ये पर, ये एग्जैक्टली exactly किस केस में आ, आ, लाया गया है इट हैज बीन लाइक इट केम बिकॉज इन द केस ऑफ इन द केस ऑफ एजी 
Perari Valan. We know he he was uh, he was there in the uh, assassination of our former Prime Minister Rajiv Gandhi. So, in his case, in his case, it is brought. What exactly is Article 142? Constitutional language. We are reading. It is a unique power or an extraordinary power to the Supreme Court, which gives the Supreme Court this power to do complete justice. Now here, this is something which is to be underlined again, complete justice. And again, this is something which is a controversial point or which is, you know, a very vague point. It is not clear. You can't, you know, it is very subjective. What is what complete justice is? It is not mentioned, it is not defined anywhere. It is at the discretion of Supreme Court, that the Supreme Court decide decides what exactly is complete justice and whether a particular case has uh, been provided with a complete justice or not. And that is why, because its definition is clear, it is a vague term, hai. that is why it is in news and in debates mein bhi hota hai, that you can't decide what complete justice is. Okay. Okay, so complete justice between the parties where at times the law or the statute may not provide a remedy. Okay, that are laws, the rules of our country, the degrees or the decree or whatever, they do not provide the complete justice to a particular case. The Supreme Court comes in front, takes the case and give try to give the complete remedy or the complete justice. Right? Okay, so this was the news regarding it okay but what happened exactly in this case again is to be understood for that you need to understand a small chronology so this uh, this um, ag yeah perari valan i'll uh, i'll write it at agp okay he was uh, given death sentence in this case, okay. 2014 में क्या हुआ? 2014 में इसकी death sentence को life imprisonment में convert कर दिया गया और he like uh, he was remitted for life imprisonment, right? Then what happened in 2015? He applied, he appealed, you can say, he appealed for, he appealed for, for like to uh, to remit even this to remit even life imprisonment this chronology you can remember to understand the entire case it will be easier for you so death sentence pehle mila uske baad remit karke life imprisonment mil gaya ab usko bhi ye cancel karane ke liye appeal appeal kiya inhone right then what did the governor did governor has the power if you know little bit about the provisions, the constitutional provisions which are related to the governor of our country. So, governor under Article 161 deals with that the governor has this power to pardon. Okay? But what Tamil Nadu's government, uh, governor did, Tamil Nadu government did not, uh, governor I'm talking about, the governor did not take any step. He said that, that this does not come, un come under my power. It It is to be decided by the president. Right? That I cannot really decide upon this. The president is the uh, right authority uh, to decide, okay? And he did not actually take any action for like so many years, right? And after seeing this, that the gov governor of Tamil Nadu, the Tamil Nadu governor is not taking any step, Supreme Court, Supreme Court took this case, right? Took this case and un using under uh, using article 140, and used basically article 142 which is which again gives the extraordinary power to the supreme court okay i hope this is clear to you let me just repeat he was given a death sentence 2014 may it was remitted to life in imprisonment he appealed for you know to to remit even this life imprisonment then tamil nadu uh, ke jo governor tho, the unko decide karna tha about you know remitting this punishment or not uh, about this remission okay he did not decide he said it doesn't come under my, my power president uh, should be deciding this and uh, actually nothing happened in this case for, for so many years and finally supreme court took it under one art article 142 right so this was the entire case again there is one more question which is very important for for us to do which is which is understanding the differentiation between pardoning power of the governor and the president like i've told you there is a difference Pres uh, ke governor ne bhi bola ki, this does not come come, uh, come under my uh, my uh, constitutional uh, you know uh, area 
so there must be some difference between the powers given to both the board, uh, both the authorities the governor and the president precisely yes what exactly are those provisions the first one is the first one is if we talk about the president the pardoning power of the president so he can pardon reprieve respite remit suspend or commute the punishment or a sentence of any person convicted of any offense against a central law so the central law is to be underlined here because that's where it makes a differentiation with the governor president can take any action when it comes to central law but wherein if we talk about the governor he will only take action when it comes to state laws right so this is one difference another difference could be that president is the only authority to pardon the death sentence this you have to remember though this is very easy but at times you can be confused with this that parli uh, that a president is the only authority to grant the grant uh, the to pardon the death sentence governor does not have any such power okay the governor can suspend remit or commute a death sentence but the governor cannot pardon a death sentence or, or agar state mein koi aisa case aata hai jahan par death sentence ko uh, pardon kar raha hota hai that that particular state is shifted to the president because that is that only comes under the authority of president not the governor the third difference could be between the two bodies is he can the president i'm talking about he can again pardon reprieve respite uh, suspension remission or commutation in respect to what punishment or sentences by the court martial theek hai court martial ke cases mein bhi jo authority hai wo lay karti hai to the president of india right wherein the governor does not have any such power when it comes to court martial theek hai military ki jo military court wali jo powers hain uh, by that i mean uh, i mean that right so this is precisely the major difference between the powers the pardoning powers of the governor and the president all right so that was about this topic up next we have raising marriage age of women recently again it was in so much in news you all must have heard about it that uh, uh, the government uh, the government of our country is trying to raise the age the marriage age of a woman from 18 to 21 from 18 to 21 presently it is 18 and we're trying to raise it to 21 equivalent to that as of a uh, men because men ki bhi it is 21 okay and for that what all we need to do we need to amend certain provisions and what are those certain provisions or what are the certain bills we need to uh, get the amendment done into the first one is indian christian marriage act of 1972 the second is parsi marriage and divorce act 36 muslim personal law ya fir shariat jisko hum bolte hain application act 1935 37 then we have special marriage act of 1954 again a very important one will be dealing with this in uh, uh, in detail in a while and then we have hindu marriage act of 1955 again an important one we will be understanding it in detail uh, in a while again foreign marriage act of 1956 apart from this we also have sharda act again an important one sharda act of 1929 where it was uh, said that uh, the eligible age for the men would be 18 and the eligible age for marriage for a woman would be 14 so this was given in in the sharda act okay so this was about the technical part of uh, uh, the technical part of the particular topic but my today's focus would be in understanding the details of this provision what exactly and how exactly it is going to impact the lives of a woman okay so since we are studying this topic for upsc perspective there are both the things or the both the sides we need to uh, take up parallelly humme एडवांटेजेस भी कवर करने हैं डिसएडवांटेजेस भी कवर करने हैं राइट इफ वी टॉक अबाउट द एडवांटेजेस और हाउ यू नो हाउ इज इट गोइंग टू हेल्प द वुमेन सो दिस कैन डेफिनेटली हेल्प इंडियन वुमेन बिकॉज सिंस वी आर इंक्रीजिंग इट फ्रॉम 18 टू 21 वन शील गेट three more years she'll get three more years to educate herself maybe to get financially independent to to experience the world which is again very important when you know before before we get married or before we get into relationship with anyone okay and um, again you need to see this this is something the chart says this particular uh, this particular segment talks about the problems of women 
uh, phases when she, uh, you know, when she marry in her early ages of of her life, like 18 or you know, even below, even below that. Though we say that 18 is the eligible uh, the limit or eligible time, but we really uh, don't. The implementation part is again an issue with with that. So we actually need to see that 18. Bola hai, but wo abhi tak implement nahi hua hai. 21, again we are doing this, but again implementation would always be an issue and we really need to work upon the implementation part first, I feel. Okay, so we know that these are some of the problem a, a woman can face and when I'm talking about the advantages or when I'm talking about, uh, you know, the problems, you remember that I'm not talking about those high school uh, sweetheart marriages. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about the forceful marriages, okay? The forced mar marriages a girl uh, undergoes, okay? Just ki wajah se, she faces a lot of problem. We all know that early marriage le can lead to early pregnancy, okay? So physical health is something she uh, need to, you know, she might face problems at. Then education would be... We, we uh, as I've already told you that uh, she won't get proper education, right? She won't be financially independent. So, education part is the second uh, thing which she faces. Then gender-based violence could also be there, and we this also amounts for accounts for unequal gender norms. Okay, but there are also not just this there are also certain certain things which you need to see here that uh, she might face social isolation from family friends and other support groups apart from this the intimate partners and the other forms of gender based violence could be there we have already discussed this uske baad, level of education and the employment opportunities could you know could go down could go down and she won't be uh, like financially independent which i feel is very important before you get into any kind of marriage likelihood to already uh, likelihood to already have children or a higher number of children could also be a case and uh, these are like i've told you these are some of the problems i've quoted here and trust me these are not the only problems these are not the only problems one has to face she might face depression so you can say a mental health a lot of mental health issues she undergoes. The situation at the ground level is even worse. Uh, it, though it, it doesn't look that bad in the slide, but the situation at the ground level is really, really bad, even in this. Okay. So, now as I was saying, uh, let me just take you to take you back to this. Yeah. Indian Child Protection Forum, Kailas Shatyarthi uh, Nobel Laureate, Unka ye ek forum hai, and he, or you can say, this forum was against raising the age. Okay. Now you all must be wondering why it is a good thing to raise the age of a marriage age of a woman. Why uh, this forum is against it? So they, what, what reason they gave is ICPF. What ICPF said is, ICPF said, ki we, we all know that a girl has to undergo a lot of times the patriarchal violence right and if, suppose before 21 years uh, of age you want to get married to someone she wants to right and which is against the consent of a family right it would give the right to the family or to the patriarch patriarchal setup to 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 maybe to 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 throw throw her out or maybe to you know to do any kind of violence or uh, honor killing we uh, every day here so all those crimes they might commit using this this law which is which which says that uh, the age would be increased so that that is what uh, they are really worried of and that is why they have uh, they have put their uh, point against the rise of re uh, the age all right so now let us look at some of those provisions i was talking about so uh jo individual hai, the individual attains the age of majority at 18 as per the indian majority act of 1875 and for hindus section 5 for clause 3 of the hindus marriage act of 1955 sets again this law also sets 18 years only as the minimum age for the bride and 21 for the for the 
मेन जो कि हमारा प्रेजेंट भी अभी है राइट द प्रेजेंट रूल ओके एंड चाइल्ड मैरिजेस आर नॉट इलीगल यू हैव टू रिमेम्बर दिस चाइल्ड मैरिजेस आर नॉट इलीगल इन आर कंट्री बट कैन बी डिक्लेयर वाइड दे कैन बी कैंसल्ड एट द रिक्वेस्ट ऑफ द माइनर इन द मैरिज अगर माइनर रिक्वेस्ट करे बट अगैन आई डोंट थिंक समबडी इज रियली गो एंड कंप्लेन अबाउट दिस सो दिस डजेंट रियली हैपन अगैन स्पेशल मैरिज एक्ट ऑफ फिफ्टी फोर and the prohibition of child marriage act 2006 also prescribe 18 and 20 so these are some of the uh, provisions uh, which the legal provisions i'm talking about which prescribes this age of 18 and 21 to agar ye uh, agar aapko thoda sa historical background uh, mein jana ho aur uske bare mein likhna ho to in in uh, points ko aap quote kar sakte hain in acts ko or in sections ko aap quote kar sakte hain that's what that's what uh, i am uh, telling you okay now uh, if we talk about the over uh, to override all other laws and uh, customs the, the, uh, these are few of the points though we have already discussed major ones but again the prohibition of child marriage act amendment bill 2021 we have seen it 18 to 21 they are uh, they are trying to uh, you know bring it at par with the men the marriage age of a woman right it seeks to amend all those acts we have already done so this newspaper cutting exactly says what we have already studies nothing more than that so that was all about this topic up next we have an our next subject economy and the first topic in economy is global food policy report whenever a report comes in news there are again two three things you need to remember i always tell you in this my lecture first thing is who releases this report first thing you need to remember who is the who is the you know publisher or who exactly releases this okay the second thing if there are any major key findings on that particular in that particular report and if there is any key finding pertaining to india or indian perspective say ya indian uh, india ke bare mein kuch bhi agar us uh, report ne data diya hai that you also have to remember because uh, they can ask because that is important for uh, upsc right so who released it international food policy research institute ifpri has released this report right uh, report ka pura naam hai global food policy report climate change and food system what are the key findings so there are two key findings or you can say we have separated them into two two uh, sections the first which is related with indian perspective or the or the facts uh, which express where exactly india stands at and the another segment or the another another one is with the perspective from the perspective of a global you know a global community okay indian ki india ke kuch key findings dekh lete hain key findings on india the first one is india's food production could drop 16% and the number of those at risk for hunger could increase by 23% by 2030 again a cause of a concern so this is an alarming fact uh this report came up with the next uh, and the most uh, i mean uh, these are actually just two three major findings i've put here there were many findings about given by, about this uh, given uh, in this particular report but i've just uh, tried i'm just trying to tell you the important ones the second one is the number of indians at risk from hunger in 2030 is expected to be 73.9 million so 2030 tak the number would increase dramatically right these were in indian indian perspective ab hum global scenario thoda dekh lete hain global scenario ki baat kare to global food production will grow by 60 परसेंट राइट टू थाउजेंड टेन के लेवल की अगर हम बात करें तो इट विल इंक्रीज ओके द फूड प्रोडक्शन विल इंक्रीज डिस्पाइट बट डिस्पाइट द ग्रोथ दो इट विल इंक्रीज पर कैपिटल कंजम्पन लेवल इन डेवलपिंग कंट्रीज विल रिमेन लेस देन हाफ लेस देन हाफ ऑफ दोज ऑफ डेवलप्ड कंट्रीज सो देर इज अ क्लियर कट डिस्टिंग देर इज अ क्लियर कट डिमार्केशन बिटवीन develop and developing countries when it comes to consumption habits theek hai production and demand are projected to grow more rapidly in developing countries though right so there is an overall fo uh, global food production uh, growth but again the consumption is less uh, especially when it comes to the developing country okay what are few of the recommendations recommendation given by this report the first one would be investment in r&d for innovation of course research and development mein agar hum jitna invest karenge it will be better second is improved governance for resources governance improve karna 
healthier diets and more sustainable production is the need of the art the sustainability is something which is needed in every area where, wherever we go where, whatever we talk about next is stronger value chain we needed we need across the globe next one is, is climate smart finance also we need to do so that we can sustainably manage our environment as well as the human health okay so that was all about that topic but there is this uh, uh, this graph which i want all of you to have a look at this tells about the food wastage yes this report actually does not uh, you know it doesn't have anything to do with the food wastage but i thought that it would be really interesting if i put this uh, if this if i put this these statistics here so global food wastage ki agar hum baat kare so the the, the country which tops that it is china but see we comes at, at number 2 which is definitely not good but our uh, examination perspective you can remember the three top countries which which would be china india and usa and you can of course remember the last two countries also because we can definitely learn from spain and australia so you must remember the these two countries as well along with the top three countries which are uh, not exactly uh, like is not a good thing but you can remember the those three countries at least up next we have india's foreign exchange reserve india's foreign exchange reserve we all know the forex reserve which is managed by rbi our central bank keeps keeps uh, going up and down the recent context is that recently it has dropped below dollar 600 billions jo ki uh, you know bahut hi bada plunge hai kafi kam hua hai hamara since september 2021 if I, if we talk about from like like uh, some few months when in september it was 642 and now it is 600 so around dollar 45 billion we have plunged down what are the reasons for it and what could be done would be the two aspects we'll be dealing in our today's lecture let us first see what are the reasons behind the drop in the india's forex reserve the first one would be fall in dollar value asset so when we calculate the forex reserve uh, when the rbi in its balance sheet cover uh, uh, you know uh, uh, sees or uh, uh, calculate the forex reserve it the maximum portion in our forex reserve comes from the dollar value of assets theek hai dollar value of assets but abhi inka jo hai fall dekhne ko mila hai this has reduced and why this has reduced because we all know covid ke time mein during covid the fpis if you remember the foreign post portfolio investors portfolio investors ne kafi you know uh, so there was a outflow of money Uh, or you can say outflow of dollar through through what through fpis fpis took their money out of india jiski wajah se dollar uh, dollar uh, you know bahar gaya and there was a fall in dollar value of assets in our for in our forex reserves this was the first and the major reason i would say next was the appreciation of us dollar we know ki during this uh, war between ukraine and russia this war this was going on theek hai iski wajah se actually everybody looked up for a currency which is reliable and everybody found the that reliable currency to be dollar jiski wajah se the the you know the value of dollar appreciated and then again uh, this was uh, but but this became the reason behind drop in india's forex reserve next is related with the first point only that is capital outflows by foreign port portfolio investors or fpi they took all the uh, money outside during the covid and then gold prices ka bhi kafi i'm sorry sorry gold prices ka bhi kafi impact pada hai the next question arises and the most uh, the most important one because again it is in an indian perspective that how will this affect the indian rupee of course it is going to uh, Uh, make the rupee depreciate only or the value of rupee has gone down dramatically after this news so this was precisely the impact right so that was all about this topic it actually keeps going up and down so you need to you know you need to update yourself with forex reserve to apne exam ke paas jo exact data ho wohi aapko yaad rakhna hai exact data aapko yaad nahi rakhna because it keeps changing right next is 
इंटरनेशनल रिलेशंस एंड द फर्स्ट टॉपिक इज इंडो पैसिफिक इकोनॉमिक फ्रेमवर्क और आईपीईएफ रिसेंटली दिस हैज टेकन प्लेस वी आर ट्राई वी विल ट्राई टू अंडरस्टैंड व्हाट एग्जैक्टली आईपीईएफ इज व्हाट आर द कंट्रीज इन्वॉल्व इन इट एंड हाउ इंडिया इज एसोसिएटेड विद इट राइट इफ देयर इज एनी इंटरनेशनल फोरम वी आर टॉकिंग अबाउट वी मस्ट अंडरस्टैंड इट विद इंडियन परस्पेक्टिव और हाउ इंडिया प्लेस a part into it or what will be the impact uh, jo india ke upar padega about that forum or uh, the actions taken by that particular forum that's important for our exam right recently uh, united states sees india's participation in this ipef as very important and this was precisely the reason because uh, india is an important player that is why we are reading it here okay but we first understand what ipef is so let me first try you uh, try to tell you you might confuse it with free tra trade agreement agreements we know free trade agreements hote hain between different countries taki trade barriers ko remove kiya ja sake theek hai do countries ke beech mein trade ko boost kiya ja sake but this is not fta this is not an fta this is not free trade agreement then what exactly is this uh, so if you remember uh, during the trump administration he made us exit from a lot of forums or from a lot of groups theek hai usi mein se ek group tha tpp trans pacific partnership ठीक है टीपीपी में से एग्जिट उन्होंने कर लिया राइट right? बहुत सारे ट्रेड डील्स में से भी एग्जिट कर लिया राइट नाउ दैट ही इज गॉन बट बट बाइडन एडमिनिस्ट्रेशन इज देयर राइट नाउ सो बाइडन एडमिनिस्ट्रेशन बेसिकली और द यूनाइटेड स्टेट्स ऑफ गवर्नमेंट यूनाइटेड स्टेट्स ऑफ अमेरिका गवर्नमेंट दे आर ट्राइंग टू ब्रिज दैट गैप जो पहले ट्रंप एडमिनिस्ट्रेशन के टाइम पे क्रिएट हुआ था तो उस गैप को ब्रिज करने के लिए स्पेशली टूवर्ड्स टूवर्ड्स द टूवर्ड्स द साउथ एशियन कंट्रीज और यू नो साउथ एशियन कंट्रीज के साथ बेटर रिलेशंस करने के लिए दे हैव कम अप विद दीज दीज काइंड ऑफ दीज काइंड ऑफ फॉरम्स और यू कैन से इट इज नथिंग बट जस्ट अ वहीकल टू री अप्रोच द साउथ एशियन कंट्रीज right and we know the reason why they are trying to reapproach the countries definitely they have their interest but why uh, they are doing this kyunki wo bridge wo ek gap create ho gaya tha trump administration ke time pe aur abhi usko fulfill karne ki koshish kar kar rahe hain what are the pillars of this ipef the first would be what exactly so the when i'm talking about pillars we we will understand what exactly this forum would be doing the first is the fair and resilient trade hoga encompassing what seven sub topics includes uh, seven sub topics including what labor environment and digital standards so these are the three major topics jinke uh, you know uh, jinke liye the trade will happen between the between the countries or between the group the members of a group we'll also see who all are the members don't worry i'll take you to the map also but before that the second pillar supply chain resilience the third is infrastructure ko bhi better karne ki koshish kari jayegi clean energy pe bhi focus kiya jayega and decarbonization of course because environment is something very important no matter what what particular topic or what particular area we're dealing into okay next is tax or anti corruption jaisi cheezon pe bhi things would be done now the next question again ki okay we have done about this uh, we, we have read about this uh, particular forum how exactly it is going to benefit india or what is the you know uh, strategic significance to indo pacific region for india so the first is strategic significance indo pacific region ka strategic significance hai india ko we know why because it generally contains you know uh, 60% this this uh, this you can say this region this indo pacific region has 60% of the world's gdp and i think uh, more than half of the population apart from that mineral resources bhi indo pacific region mein kafi hain isliye ye ek kafi zyada important part, important hai hamare liye for for us as a country and we we know we get oil natural gas all these resources in this area right and uh, with with respect to the commerce also because again 60% gdp i have told you so this could also be a reason for improving the commerce and economic growth also in terms of economic growth and commerce uh, just just in case commerce how commerce would 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 boost or uh, like uh, commerce ka kya significance hai yahan par commerce ka ye significance hai because we know that a lot of uh, choke points 
so when we talk about commerce indo pacific region ka hum baat kar rahe hain indo pacific region so when a lot of choke points are there in indo pacific region like for example strait of malacca right we know strait of malacca con connects which two water bodies it connects pacific ocean ocean with which ocean indian ocean right to kafi zyada trade aise strait se ho ke guzarta hai that is why this this particular region is very important when it comes to commerce and economic development right okay now let me take you to the mapping portion and the number of um, uh, the, the member countries so ipef ki jo member countries hain you will see them here so actually abhi iski jitni countries hain wo clear nahi hai that how many countries will be there but definitely these are few of those countries jo main ye bracket ke andar aapko bata rahi hu these are few of those countries who are considering which are considering to be a part of ipef and what you have to remember is is that india is also considering to be a member right so these are few of the countries united states of course they have only started it philippines indonesia thailand so i was talking about the south asian countries these are the south asian countries apart from that fiji is also part of it malaysia brunei singapore vietnam australia japan new zealand south korea okay uh, yeah so these are those countries which are considering uh, actually it is not clear yet that which all are the countries or which all uh, the countries would be the part of this group but definitely these are those these are few of those countries which are considering to be a part of this group because all have their own interest in this group and it also since it also deals with indo indo pacific region so in a way it will help our country it will help in india to counter china as well in a in a way okay so that was all about this topic up next we have delhi host seo rats meeting <coughs> delhi recently delhi ne aur india has recently hosted seo meeting shanghai cooperation organization meetings jiska ek part hai rats uh, rats we'll understand what this rats is and a uh, little bit like few few points about seo as well but before that let's see what has happened recently that at conference hosted by delhi pakistan and other members discuss enhancing the cooperation in fighting various regional security problems at shanghai कोऑपरेशन uh, ऑर्गेनाइजेशन uh, अगर हम राज की बात करें तो राज स्टैंड फॉर रीजनल एंटी टेररिस्ट स्ट्रक्चर जिसका हेडक्वार्टर ताशकैन में है और ये एस से ही आया है ओके ओके सो लिटिल बिट अबाउट द द एस सी ओ इट गॉट क्रिएटेड इसका जो हेडक्वार्टर uh, है इज इन शांग है राइट right? चाइना ठीक है एंड दिस वॉज दिस केम थ्रू यू नो बिकॉज अ चार्टर वॉज साइन ड्यूरिंग सेंट पीटरबर्ग एस सी ओ हेड्स ऑफ द स्टेट मीटिंग टू थाउजेंड टू में एंड इट एंटर इन टू फोर्स इन टू थाउजेंड थ्री इफ यू टॉक अबाउट द फाउंडिंग मेम्बर्स रिमेंबर इंडिया एंड पाकिस्तान बोथ लाइक बोथ ऑफ दीज कंट्रीज आर द मेम्बर प्रेजेंटली ऑफ एस सी ओ शंघाई कोऑपरेशन ऑर्गेनाइजेशन बट बट वट but these were not the founding members we were not the founding members so they can ask you question either ways they can either ask you uh, normally telling you know uh, they can ask you normally to tell about the uh, the members or they can either tell you to you know they can either ask you to tell the founding members the founding members hum pehle dekh rahe the the founding members are kazakhstan china kyrgyzstan uh, russia tajikistan and uzbekistan just see this the map यहाँ पर मेंबर कंट्रीज के बारे में है ऑल द मेंबर कंट्रीज द फर्स्ट यू विल सी हियर इज रशियन फेडरेशन द कैपिटल कैपिटल ऑफ दिस इज मॉस्को इज वी नो ओके लेट मी जस्ट चेंज द पेन या नेक्स्ट इज रिपब्लिक ऑफ कजाकिस्तान रिपब्लिक ऑफ कजाकिस्तान द कैपिटल इज नू सुल्तान ओके किर्गिस्तान अगेन हियर यू विल सी किर्गिस्तान विच इज द कैपिटल इज बिश्केक रिपब्लिक ऑफ उजबेकिस्तान ऑल्सो यू विल सी हियर द कैपिटल इज ताशकैन और राज का भी जो हेड क्वार्टर है इज सिटुएटेड इन ताशकैन ओनली अगेन यू हैव टू रिमेम्बर दिस पॉइंट देन वी हैव तजाकिस्तान कैपिटल इज दशनबे देन वी हैव इंडिया कैपिटल न्यू डेली 
Pakistan capital is Islamabad and here you will see Republic of China People's Republic of China capital is Beijing so these are the member states of Shanghai cooperation organization you have to remember right they can sometimes they can directly ask you not if not in UPSC state PSC definitely ask you about the members the the direct factual points they are so you can remember the the members as well okay up next we have construction of bridge by China on Pangyong Lake for this you need to uh, go through a lot of maps so I have a lot of maps in this particular uh, segment for you but before that and I, I feel this is uh, this is something where context ki zyada zarurat nahi hai. we know we all know China keeps doing uh, you know something uh, like almost every day so context uh, to as such doesn't matter only in this case but still we'll, I'll just read it out for you India is closely monitoring the construction of a bridge by China what they have recently done they have you know try to bridge uh, tr try to uh, you know make this bridge at Pangyongso Lake which is situated in eastern Ladakh issue is similar issue is that only that uh, on the northern bank at Kunag Fort and on the southern bank at Moldo I'll tell you exactly which uh, location where these uh, parts are situated hai. So they have, they are trying to build this bridge here. Before coming to the factual points ab about Pang Pangyong So Lake, let me just take you to this mapping portion wherein we'll see what which area exactly we are dealing with in this particular topic. So in this map, as you can see here, this here, this red color line is LAC line of actual control. Uske side mein you will see Aksai uh, Chin, which is illegally occupied. Illegally occupied by China. Right? Here at the southern southern side of it, you will notice this water body here. Theke? Across across India and illegally uh, occupied Aksai Chin area, uh, you know, occupied by China. So this area, this across, uh, you know, uh, this this water body is Pangyong So Lake. Or par, here only they have this uh, this present context I'm talking about. Ye bridge banane ki jo, uh, you know, uh, this bridge construction they've done here only at this area only, right? Iske alawa, if you see, this is LOC, so you must understand the difference and this is Galgit Baltistan, again it is illegally occupied by, by Pakistan. So, we'll stay here, this is hot spring, again this was also a point which was in news. So make sure that you that you remember the exact position of them, okay, here Siachen Glacier, hai. this Siachen Glacier, ke mein bhi UPSC has asked the question, so exact location you pata know, hot spring. Pangyong So Lake, Siachen Glacier, Aksai Chin, Galwan Valley, okay? Very important place. News mein kaafi hota hai. So they can, uh, UPSC can ask you, you know, what, they can ask you the question in so many ways. So make sure that you remember the exact locations of these particular uh, positions, jo bhi bohat news mein hote right? Okay. Next is, uh, so I've put this picture because this movie uh, Three Idiots is what it was shot there at this lake. Anyways, the dispute we know we have already decided. But what are these fingers issue? What are these eight fingers we've been we have seen so many times in the news? And again, for that you need to look at uh, you uh, you need to look at this ma uh, this this particular segment wherein it says. So focus on this uh, purple line this purple line so china is of the opinion china china says that that what the the boundary line is up till which place is up till this place okay so the lac is here and we say that not it's it's not at finger finger 4 it is rather at finger number 8 so basically this 8 kilometer area always stay in controversies and in news because this is this is again the disputed area okay hum yahan par claim karte hain and they claim it to be here right but there's one thing to be noted here ki wo exactly bridge ka jo construction hai wo kahan par kar rahe hain wo bridge ka construction they're doing at the eastern side of finger 
एट बट नाउ यू मस्ट यू मस्ट बी वंडरिंग कि ओके इफ दे आर कंस्ट्रक्टिंग द ब्रिज एट द ईस्टर्न साइड विच मीन्स हियर समवेयर हियर एट द ईस्टर्न साइड ऑफ फिंगर एट दिन वॉट इज द प्रॉब्लम वी डेफिनेटली हैव द प्रॉब्लम I'll tell you why. Because yes, definitely this is a uh, finger eight and the eastern region. But still, this region also belongs to us only. Now, this is Aksaya Chinwala region, right? Which has been illegally occupied by China. Let me show this to you in the another map, जहाँ पर काफी clarity होगी. Yeah. So यहाँ पर इस वाले region में they are constructing the bridge. इस वाले region में. ठीक है, which is a part of Aksai Chin illegally, so it's it's our part, which has been illegally occupied by China is a different thing, but it has been it has always been our part. ठीक है, that is why we are opposing it or we are keeping a eye on it. Okay, I hope the entire thing is uh, clear to you now. The uh, the finger, all the fingers also you have seen. So, uh, what? Why does China wants to encroach alongside alongside this? Because of course they can send their troops. Why, why do why do they want to do all of this? And why are they exactly constructing the bridge? Because of of course they can so that they can easily uh, uh, you know transfer their troops to our, our territory. Also, if Pangyong so lake you talk about, this is also strategically a very important area as as it is very. Close to Chushul Valley, which again it it is again a topic which remains in news, which is one of the battle fronts between India and China, even during 1962 war. So this is one of those reasons it is very much strategically important area. All right, so this was about the entire topic. Up next we have New Development Bank or NDB. NDB. Whenever you come across this word, you have to remember this one organization or one group which is BRICS. ब्रिक्स ठीक है समटाइम्स यूपीएससी कैन आस्क यू दिस डायरेक्ट क्वेश्चन व्हिच इज टू व्हिच ग्रुप एनडीबी और न्यू डेवलपमेंट बैंक बिलोंग्स टू सो ब्रिक्स इज द ग्रुप ओके सो व्हाट इज द रीसेंट कॉन्टेक्स्ट व्हाई एनडीबी वाज अ न्यूज एंड विल आल्सो ट्राई एंड अंडरस्टैंड फ्यू थिंग्स अबाउट ब्रिक्स ब्रिक्स बिकॉज़ इट इज अ बैंक ऑफ दैट पर्टिकुलर ग्रुप ओनली एनडीबी इज अ सेटिंग अप ऑफ रीजनल इज सेटिंग अप अ रीजनल ऑफिस इन गुजरात इंडिया और इसीलिए ये काफी न्यूज में था एनडीबी एनडीबी ठीक है ब्रिक्स का ये बैंक है वी हैव टोल्ड वी हैव जस्ट डिस्कस एंड इट इज बेसिकली टू फोस्टर द इन्वेस्टमेंट एंड डेवलपमेंट ऑफ कंट्रीज राइट Initially, it was for its member countries, but uh, UPSC again can confuse you with that. Is it just for the member countries, or uh, even the other countries can be a part of it? So uh, the next line will clear your uh, will clear your doubt about this if you have it. The bank will mobilize the resources for infrastructure for what? Infrastructure. So this bank will give you money or uh, give you loan for infrastructure, sustainable development in your country. या फिर BRICS के जो भी projects हैं उसके लिए fund करेगा and not just that, even other emerging economies, okay, and the developing countries. So again, these two words is to be underlined here to supplement existing efforts of multilateral and regional financial institutions for global growth and development. Again, for investments and growth purposes. All right. so just uh, nothing more than that you have to remember just few factual points you can remember any time regarding these banks and uh, but but uh, do not uh, you know uh, underestimate them because upsc have already asked about uh, asian development bank they can ask you about this also so these banks the international banks especially are also important not just the not just the indian banks are important international banks are also important up next we have uigus again uh whenever we hear about human right violation we hear about this uh, ethnic minority of china today we'll try and understand what exactly has happened with them where exactly uh, which exact position we are talking about which exact location we are talking about when we uh, read about uyghurs muslim so the context is unhcr or Hum united nations high commissioner for human rights uh, is at Uh, the commissioner, the commissioner Michel uh, Bachelet, he uh, is at Xinjiang region, जहाँ पर ये human right violations आए दिन हम news में पढ़ते रहते हैं कि इनके against जो human right violations we see. But before that, before we, before I proceed with the topic, let me just uh, take you to the map so that you can uh, connect it well. This is uh, this is our country, और इसके perspective में अगर हम देखें, so this is Xinjiang province of China. 
इसी प्रोविंस में दीज एथनिक माइनॉरिटी दे लिव दो चाइना हैज गिवन देम अ स्टेटस ऑफ एथनिक माइनॉरिटी बट एवरी नाउ एंड देन वी कम अक्रॉस ह्यूमन राइट वायोलेशन अगेंस्ट अगेंस्ट देम बीट यू नो बीट रेप अगेंस्ट वुमेन बीट अब्यूज अब्यूज विद दैट ग्रुप और बीट फोर्स लेबर चाइल्ड लेबर एंड अ लॉर्ड ऑफ देम अ लॉर्ड ऑफ अदर थिंग्स ओके सो दिस इज अगेन जिंगजियांग प्रोविंस ठीक है दिस इज ऑल्सो इम्पॉर्टेंट फॉर नेचुरल गैस अ इम्पॉर्टेंट रीजन राइट ओके लेट मी टेक यू बैक टू द स्लाइड सो वट्स द इशू द इशू इज दिस ओनली दैट देर हैज बिन यू नो ह्यूमन राइट्स वायोलेशन दो चाइना इज ऑफ द ओपिनियन दैट वी हैव पुट देम इन टू अ री एडुकेशन कैंप बट there has been reports and many proofs which you know which says that it is not a re those are not the re education camps rather they are the mass detention camps mass detention camps where people where they have you know jahan par mass detention inhone logo ka kar rakha hai for millions of these एथनिक माइनॉरिटीज यूगिर यूगर्स मुस्लिम्स ठीक है सो ये आपको याद रखना है एंड ह्यूमन राइट वायोलेशन का जब भी टॉपिक आता है यू कैन ऑलवेज कोट दिस एग्जाम्पल ऑफ दिस एथनिक कम्युनिटी राइट सो दे हैव पुट दम अंडर मास डिटेंशन इन द प्रोटेक्ट ऑफ वॉट एडुकेशन कैम्प्स ठीक है बट वी but the global uh, world has this proof that it, they are not any education camps and uh, uh, beat uh, the european countries or you know the europe i'm talking about the eu us canada uh, so all these countries are against you know against china in this particular topic but uh, their their best friend pakistan is supporting them Pakistan is favoring uh, whatever they're doing, doing to this ethnic minority they really have no problem with it so they have come into the support of uh, China regarding this topic so that was all about this topic up next we have India US Inc investment incentive agreement so there has been a agreement called investment incentive incentive agreement between two countries India and US okay so just two three aspects we need to cover about this topic the first one is itself uh, is is clear it's uh, with the with the heading itself that it is a pact between two countries india and united states of america what exactly this pact is all about and how india can be benefited from this pact we'll try and understand here so this pact actually uh, we have signed it with uh, this country or ye important ho jata hai so that america can uh, finance us or can do you know uh, investment certain kind of investment in certain areas theek hai uski uske liye so to get that investment to get that uh, to get those finances and to get that investment it was needed okay uh, so this uh, uh, this uh, this uh, this cooperation development finance cooperation theek hai इनको फाइनेंस कंटिन्यू करने के लिए ये अग्रीमेंट चाहिए था ठीक है ये अग्रीमेंट का होना जरूरी था सो दैट डी एफ सी विच इज डेवलपमेंट फाइनेंस कॉपरेशन फाइनेंस जो है वो कंटिन्यू रख सके विद इंडिया राइट नाउ जो सर्विसेज ऑफर हो रही हैं इस अग्रीमेंट के थ्रू दो सर्विसेज आर डेट इक्विटी आई मीन इक्विटी इन्वेस्टमेंट इन्वेस्टमेंट गारंटी इन्वेस्टमेंट इंश्योरेंस एंड री इंश्योरेंस फिजिबिलिटी स्टडीज फॉर पोटेंशियल प्रोजेक्ट्स एंड ग्रांट्स वॉट इज द सिग्निफिकेंस ऑफ दिस अग्रीमेंट ऑफकोर्स इट विल हेल्प गेटिंग इन्वेस्टमेंट्स डन इन आर कंट्री इट विल हेल्प गेट अस मोर एंड मोर फाइनेंस सो दिस इज प्रिसाइसली द सिग्निफिकेंस ऑफ दिस पर्टिकुलर पैक बिटवीन द टू कंट्रीज राइट चलिए up next we have a next topic which belongs to environment and the topic is forest fires again kafi news mein hota hai mains ke liye kafi important topic ho sakta hai so we will in this today's segment we will try and cover एवरी आस्पेक्ट जहाँ पर हम फॉरेस्ट फायर के बारे में थोड़ा पढ़ेंगे देन वी विल कॉज देन वी विल रीड अबाउट द कॉजेज एंड ऑफकोर्स एट लास्ट वी विल ऑल्सो सजेस्ट सम ऑफ द रेमेडीज All right. So, the context is forest fire in Uttarakhand and Himachal Pradesh. We have been, we have witnessed a lot. How is the situation? April month ki agar hum baat kare, so Himachal reported about five seventy, uh, sorry seven five zero 
750 forest fires while uttarakhand reported more than 15000 1500 1500 फॉरेस्ट फायर्स जबकि ये दोनों ही ऐसे एरियाज हैं जिनको बहुत ज्यादा सस्टेनेबिलिटी की जरूरत है बाकी उल्टा ही हो रहा है वी आर विटनेसिंग अ लॉर्ड ऑफ फॉरेस्ट फायर्स इन दीज टू प्लेसेस व्हिच इज वेरी यू नो इट इज अगेन कॉज ऑफ अ कंसर्न फॉर आर एनवायरमेंट क्योंकि ये ही तो कुछ ऐसे एरियाज है बाकी तो मेट्रोपोलिटन सिटीज है यू एनी वेज डोंट सी फॉरेस्ट इन दीज एरियाज बट दीज आर दोज वन ऑफ दोज फ्यू एरियाज जहाँ पर आपको फॉरेस्ट दिखेंगे और यहाँ पर भी अगर ये प्रॉब्लम्स हो रही है तो डेफिनेटली कुछ प्रॉब्लम है वट आर द कॉज ऑफ फायर तो फॉर दैट यू नीड टू लुक सी दिस पर्टिकुलर स्लाइड वट दिस जी आई एव सेलिंग यू कि फॉरेस्ट फायर एक्चुअली शुरू कैसे होती है एंड हाउ हाउ एग्जैक्टली इट एंड अप ठीक है यू कैन हैव अ लुक एट दिस वाई लेट मी टेल यू अबाउट नेचुरल कॉजेज ऑफ फॉरेस्ट फायर्स द फर्स्ट वुड बी वॉल्कन एक करप्शन इफ देर इज एन वॉल्कन एक करप्शन दी यू नो लावा कम्स आउट एंड इट रीचेज टू द फॉरेस्ट सो दैट कुड बी वन ऑफ द कॉजेज सेकेंड ए स्पॉन्टेनियस फायर भी हो सकता है कोल फायर्स भी हो सकते हैं अंडरग्राउंड कोल से भी फायर हो सकती है ड्राई लाइटनिंग स्ट्रॉम से भी हो सकती है राइट right? लाइटनिंग की वजह से भी हो सकता है एंड अगर कोई रॉक फॉल स्पार्क हुआ है उससे भी हो सकता है रॉक्स की वजह से जो भी स्पार्क्स होते हैं these were the natural causes if we talk about the man made causes the first with is uh, cigarette stubs theek hai fir camp fires ya bone fires jab uh, whenever like a tourist go and we do this bone fires uski wajah se bhi this could also this is also a potential reason for forest fires third is equipment related fires then we have arson for land clearing if you want to clear a particular land in a particular or a particular patch in that in that forest we generally burn it which again could lead to a forest fire and next the last one could be global warming a very very potential cause these days global warming so these are few of the natural and the man made causes you can remember and quote in your mains examination if a forest fire this if this topics being asked all right now now that we have understood about the causes we also must understand ki okay since this is such a big problem what our government is doing about it or what are the efforts which our government has taken already so the first would be fsi which is forest survey of india they developed the forest fire alert system to monitor the forest so the first thing if we have to come up or if we have to solve anything we need to monitor it we need to understand the problem this is precisely what F fsi which is forest survey of india has done that is they have developed a system of to monitor the forest fire in real time taki usi time pata chal sake and so that we can solve it at that particular time only then real time fire information from uh, identified fire hotspots is gathered using modis this is again a, sen a software sensor software theek hai jisse hum detect kar sakte hain forest fire can be a factual question in your prelims examination that what exactly is related to so forest fire se related hai napff which is national action plan on forest fire it was launched in 2018 to minimize these fires how ये कैसे मिनिमाइज करेगा इट विल इट इज गोइंग टू इन्फॉर्म एनेबल एम्पावर फॉरेस्ट फ्रेंच कम्युनिटीज ठीक है कम्युनिटीज को ये इन्फॉर्म करेगा राइट एंड नॉट जस्ट इन्फॉर्म इट विल आल्सो इंसेंटिवाइज देम टू वर्क विद द स्टेट फॉरेस्ट डिपार्टमेंट राइट द लास्ट वन इज एफ पी एफ पी एम विच इज फॉरेस्ट फायर प्रिवेंशन एंड मैनेजमेंट स्कीम दिस इज अगेन स्कीम ऑफ आर गवर्नमेंट विच सेज दैट ओनली द सेंट्रली फंडेड प्रोग्राम स्पेसिफिकली डेडिकेटेड टू असिस्टिंग दी स्टेट्स इन डीलिंग विद दी फॉरेस्ट fires right so these are some of the efforts which are being taken by the government again uh, could be uh, listed down in the uh, solutions you will offer in your answer right okay अब नेक्स्ट वी हैव एंडो सल्फान विक्टिम केसेस ये भी काफी ज्यादा न्यूज में देखने को मिलता है वट एवर लाइक इट इट इज इट इज नॉट जस्ट बैड फॉर द एनवायरमेंट हेल्थ बट इट इज ऑल्सो वेरी हार्मफुल फॉर द हेल्थ ऑफ humans ठीक है ह्यूमन हेल्थ के लिए भी काफी यू नो इट इज इट इज वेरी बैड कॉन्टेक्स्ट इज द सुप्रीम कोर्ट हैज स्लैम केरला गवर्नमेंट वॉट वॉट द केरला गवर्नमेंट हैज डिड दे दे यू नो फॉर फॉर इट्स इन एक्शन इन प्रोवाइडिंग रिलीफ टू द एंडोसल्फान पेस्टिसाइड एक्सपोजर विक्टिम ओके दैट इज वाई सुप्रीम कोर्ट हैज स्लैम दिस केरला एंडोसल्फान है क्या इट इज अ पेस्टिसाइड so this is again a first thing if you have no clue about what what are we talking about it is a pesticide we are talking about with hazardous effects on human genetic and endocrine system not just endocrine system i feel genetic 
जेनेटिक सिस्टम इज़ वेरी यू नो अगर कोई जेनेटिक डिजीज़ हो जाती है इट गेट्स वेरी डिफिकल्ट टू ट्रीट इट सो जेनेटिक चेंजेस भी ये कर सकता है इट इज़ दैट इट इज़ दैट हार्मफुल फॉर आर हेल्थ ओके बट वॉट आर द यूज वाई इफ इट इज़ दैट हार्मफुल वाई डू वी यूज इट और वाई इज इट देयर इन प्लेस ओनली एट द एट द वेरी बिगनिंग सो इट इज स्प्रेड ऑन क्रॉप्स लाइक फॉर एग्जाम्पल कॉटन कैश्यू फ्रूट्स टीज पैडी टोबैको एट्सेट्रा ताकि जो बहुत सारे पेस्ट्स होते हैं एग्रीकल्चर में उनको कहीं ना कहीं हम कंट्रोल कर सकें राइट लाइक फॉर एग्जाम्पल वाइट फ्लाइज आ देर एफेज आ देर बीटल्स वॉर्म्स इन सब पे हम एंडोसल्फान से कंट्रोल कर सकते हैं वॉट आर द एनवायरमेंटल इफेक्ट्स एनवायरमेंटल इफेक्ट्स मैनी इट कुड बी मैनी इफेक्ट्स लाइक लॉर्ड ऑफ एमिशन और प्लांट लाइफ को ये काफ़ी ज़्यादा इम्पैक्ट कर सकता है ह्यूमन इम्पैक्ट की अगर हम बात करें द इम्पैक्ट इट कॉजेज ऑन ह्यूमन इट इट कैन बी कार्सी नो जेनिक ठीक है इट हैज दो कैंसर कॉजिंग एलिमेंट्स इन साइड दिस पर्टिकुलर दिस पर्टिकुलर pesticides right so these are some of the points you can remember regarding endosulfan up next we have changes to biological diversity act so again biological diversity act 2002 ko change kar diya gaya hai there has been few amendments in biological diversity act of 2002 but before that before we come to the uh, amendments or what exactly we have changed we need to understand what exactly biological diversity act of 2002 was for that you need to look at this one the salient features of the act the first one was it aims to regulate access to biological resources of the country and equitable sharing of benefits arising out of the use of biological resources ki jo bhi biological resources ke benefits hain they should be equally shared among all right next one was emphasis on the conservation and sustainable use of biological diversity the third one was it also talked about setting up of national biological biodiversity authority we call it as nba and not at just national level but also at the state level theek hai and also at the uh, you know at even at the low over level which we generally call it as management committee it also talked about to respect and protect the traditional knowledge of the local communities at times what happens ki local communities ki wo original knowledge hoti hai but people from outside comes to that place take that knowledge or you know we call it piracy to take that knowledge aur apne naam pe wo patent karwa lete hain so that is also wrong aur usi cheez ko uh, deal karne ke liye there were provisions certain provisions in biological diversity act of 2002 all right now let us now look at uh, the present context and what has uh, wh what were the amendments related to it so the government had in december 2021 introduced the biological uh, diversity bill 2000 2021 in lok sabha the bill is in the final stages of of consultation in the joint parliamentary committee what are the highlights of the bill actually there are just two three points jo yahan par bahut important hai aur expected bhi hai ki wahi se question aa sakta hai so jo ayush doctors hain actually they appealed for this they said ki we are facing a lot of problems while we do our research on wild uh, you know wild plant species theek hai wild plant species pe hum apna research nahi kar pa rahe hain because they are they are they are what they protected un under wild uh, this biological diversity act of 2002 to kuch exemptions de, de dijiye वाइल्ड वाइल्ड स्पीशीज को वाइल्ड प्लांट स्पीशीज की मैं बात कर रही हूँ सो दैट द रिसर्च कुड बी कंडक्टेड एंड नॉट जस्ट रिलैक्सेशन शुड बी गिवन इन द रिसर्च फील्ड द फील्ड द रिलैक्सेशन मस्ट ऑल्सो बी गिवन इन द पेटेंट फील्ड सो पेटेंट करने सो सपोज इफ देर इज अ डॉक्टर उन्होंने कोई रिसर्च करी है और अपनी रिसर्च को वो पेटेंट कराना चाहते हैं तो पेटेंट के लिए भी जो पूरा प्रोसीजर है उसको भी रिलैक्स करने की इस पर्टिकुलर अमेंडमेंट में बात करी गई है सो दीज वर द टू मेजर हाइलाइट्स ऑफ दिस पर्टिकुलर बिल फर्स्ट इज पर्टेनिंग टू आयुष मिनिस्टर आयुष आयुष डॉक्टर्स ठीक है कि उनको कुछ रिलैक्सेशन मिले इन देयर रिसर्च एंड पेटेंट प्रोसेस को भी ईजी बनाया जाए ऑल राइट ओके एंड देन वॉट वॉज द ऑपोजिशन ऑपोजिशन सबसे पहला तो ये है कि जब इस बिल को प्रपोज uh, किया गया है अमेंडमेंट्स जब हुए सो देर वॉज नो पब्लिक ओपिनियन पब्लिक ओपिनियन वॉज नॉट टेकन देर वॉज नो पब्लिक ओपिनियन सेकेंड इट सेज देर आर सो मेनी एनवायरमेंटलिस्ट विच सेज कि दिस बिल एक्चुअली डिज नॉट यू नो इज नॉट फोकसिंग अपॉन द 
प्लांट स्पीशीज दिस इज मोर फोकसिंग अपॉन द कमर्शलाइजेशन कि रिसर्च करने के बाद लोग पेटेंट करवा पाएंगे एंड ऑल ऑफ दोज थिंग्स विल हैपन एंड दे विल यू नो दे विल कीप इंक्रीजिंग सो इट इज मोर फोकसिंग अपॉन द कमर्शलाइजेशन रादर द मेजर ऑब्जेक्टिव ऑफ एक्ट ऑफ टू थाउजेंड टू वॉज टू प्रोटेक्ट दी वाइल्ड लाइफ ठीक है वॉज टू प्रोटेक्ट दी स्पीशीज ठीक है बट यहाँ पर ये वाला बिल अमेंडमेंट के बाद जो है वो कमर्शलाइजेशन पे इसका ज्यादा ध्यान हो जाएगा इंस्टेड ऑफ इंस्टेड ऑफ डूइंग वॉट इंस्टेड ऑफ प्रोटेक्टिंग दी स्पीशीज ठीक है सो दीज वर प्रिसाइसली दी थिंग्स यू हैव टू रिमेंबर इस टॉपिक के बारे में राइट चलिए दिस वेव डन ऑलरेडी हाँ जी NGT not a case of extra delegation of powers. This is what Supreme Court has said. Recently, Supreme Court ने, I mean, uh, actually, Madhya Pradesh की एक uh, bar association ने, they said कि there are certain provisions, NGT के कुछ provisions हैं, which are not right. So they basically challenged certain provisions of NGT. ठीक है? What were those certain provisions? We will deal with them and then what. Are we going to do? We will also study about NGT National Green Tribunal. Okay, what uh, exactly how it came through and what are the major you know uh, uh, what exactly is the role of NGT? We'll deal with. Okay, so पहले हम देख लेते हैं कि कौन से ऐसे वो provisions हैं या फिर कौन से ऐसे वो clauses हैं जिनको challenge किया है मध्य प्रदेश मध्य प्रदेश बार एसोसिएशन ने ऑफ एनजीटी राइट सो द फर्स्ट इज ऑन सेक्शन थ्री ऑफ एनजीटी एक्ट सो फर्स्ट वन इज सेक्शन थ्री इट इज नॉट अ केस ऑफ सेंट्रल गवर्नमेंट बीइंग गिवन टू मच पावर ठीक है इट इज नॉट अ केस ऑफ सेंट्रल गवर्नमेंट बीइंग टू मच पावर तो सेंट्रल गवर्नमेंट के लिए है ये द प्रोविजन गेव द सेंट्रल अथॉरिटी टू फॉर्म एनजीटी सबसे पहले दिस प्रोविजन गेव द सेंट्रल अथॉरिटी आई मीन द अथॉरिटी टू द सेंट्रल गवर्नमेंट टू फॉर्म एनजीटी ठीक है तो इस ये वाला प्रोविजन के अगेंस्ट है ये मध्य प्रदेश हाईकोर्ट ठीक है उसके बाद एनजीटी बेंच कैन बी लोकेटेड एज पर एक्सीजेंसीज एंड इट इज नॉट नेसेसरी टू लोकेट देम एवरी वेयर इन एनी स्टेट ठीक है तो जहां जरूरत है वहीं लोकेट करिए ठीक नेक्स्ट प्रोविजन जिसके अगेंस्ट एन जिसके अगेंस्ट मध्य प्रदेश हाईकोर्ट ने बोला है इज इज वॉट नेशनल ग्रीन ट्राइब्यूनल जुरिस्ट्रिक्शन अंडर सेक्शन फोर्टीन एंड ट्वेंटी टू ऑफ एन जी टी एक्ट डज नॉट परक्लूड द हाई कोर्ट जुरिस्ट्रिक्शन अंडर आर्टिकल टू ट्वेंटी सिक्स एंड टू ट्वेंटी सेवन ऑफ द कॉन्स्टिट्यूशन बिकॉज दीज टू आर इंटरटॉइंड राइट तो ये है वो दो प्रोविजन जिसके बारे में मध्य प्रदेश हाईकोर्ट ने बोला है बट हम एन जी टी के कुछ फैक्चुअल पॉइंट्स की बात करें तो एन जी टी विनो केम अप थ्रू थ्रू एन जी टी एक्ट ऑफ Act of 2010 and this follows the principle of natural justice, right? What were the basic functions of NGT? What it or what exactly it came for? For speedy judge judgments related to the environment, so that environment ko ham ek protect karke rakh sake, sustainable rakh sake, right? Or jo bhi issues hain, jo bhi problems aati hain, jo bhi cases aate hain, un unki speedy trial ho sake, particularly agar wo environment se related hai. So because this is again very important, to cheeze hamara jo resolution hai, wo bhi jaldi hona chahiye. Next is reduction of burden. रिडक्शन इन बर्डन टू अनदर कोर्ट्स तो एन जी टी हमने एक अलग से बना दिया ताकि एनवायरमेंट के केसेस ये ले सके और बाकी कोर्ट्स पे जो है बर्डन वो कम हो सके डिस्पोजल ऑफ केसेस विद इन सिक्स मंथ्स ऑफ फाइलिंग दिस वाज़ द लिमिट व्हिच वाज़ डिसाइडेड व्हेन एन जी टी वॉज फॉर्म देन वी हैव वर्क एंड प्रिंसिपल ऑफ नेचुरल जस्टिस एज आव टोल्ड इट वर्क इन द प्रिंसिपल ऑफ नेचुरल जस्टिस नॉट लाइक देर आर नॉट एनी अदर प्रोविजन विच इज रिटर्न एनी वेयर नॉट बाउंड बाई सिविल Not by, bound by code of civil procedure. Code of civil procedure is पे नहीं लगता है. Natural justice we've already. So this is this does not applies to NGT. It only works on principle of natural justice. चलिए. अगर हम structure की बात करें तो जो principal bench है NGT का that is situated in a capital which is New Delhi. उसके बाद central zone का जो office है वो भोपाल में है. Western zone is in Pune and eastern zone का office is in Kolkata और southern का Chennai में. ये locations अगर आपको याद रखनी आप याद रख सकते हैं. Right? प्रिंसिपल बेंच तो जरूर याद रखिए इट इज इन न्यू दिल्ली ठीक है साइंस एंड टेक्नोलॉजी द फर्स्ट टॉपिक इज गगनयान मिशन एंड अ वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट टॉपिक काफी टाइम से न्यूज में भी है और कुछ ना कुछ डेवलपमेंट्स होती रहती हैं तो हमें एक बारी यू नो सी बिफोर यू कम टू द करंट अफेयर्स और बिफोर यू प्रिपेयर करंट अफेयर्स फॉर योर एग्जाम आई फील दैट 
आपका वो बेस क्लियर होना चाहिए आपका स्टैटिक पोर्शन क्लियर होना चाहिए तभी आपको करंट समझ आ, आने लगेगा ठीक है यू के नॉट जस्ट डायरेक्टली जंप इन टू द करंट पार्ट इग्नोरिंग योर स्टैटिक पोर्शन दैट इज नॉट द राइट अप्रोच टू प्रिपेयर फॉर दिस एग्जामिनेशन सो लाइक फॉर इन दिस एग्जाम्पल इन इन दिस पर्टिकुलर सेगमेंट गगनयान मिशन के बारे में हमें पता होना चाहिए उसके बाद जो भी अपडेट्स इसमें होते रहते हैं वी कैन कीप अपडेटिंग दैम इन आर नोट्स बट गगनयान मिशन का ओवरऑल ऑब्जेक्टिव क्या है और एग्जैक्टली exactly ये आया क्यों वो हमें क्लियर होना चाहिए उसके बाद जो भी अपडेट्स हैं वो तो हम वी कैन कीप ऑन एडिंग थ्रू आर थ्रू आर दीज लेक्चर्स और मे बी यू कैन यू कैन रीड दैम इन योर इन योर न्यूज पेपर्स बट अगेन वॉट इज द कॉन्टेक्स द स्टार्टिंग टेस्ट ऑफ ऑफ वॉट ह्यूमन रेटेड सॉलिड रॉकेट बूस्टर्स एच एस टू हंड्रेड दिस यू हैव टू रिमेंबर ह्यूमन रेटेड सॉलिड रॉकेट बूस्टर्स फॉर द गगन यान प्रोग्राम वॉज कंप्लीटेड अच्छा अभी हम इसके बारे में ही समझ लेते हैं सिंस वीव टॉक्ड अबाउट इट ह्यूमन रेटेड सॉलिड रॉकेट बूस्टर ये है क्या ये दिस बूस्टर इंजन इज अ पार्ट ऑफ जियो सिंक्रोनस सैटेलाइट लॉन्च व्हीकल एम के थ्री और जी एस एल वी एम के थ्री जो कि लॉन्चर भी है हमारा इसका सैटेलाइट लॉन्चर है हमारा गगनयान मिशन का राइट right? और uh, हमें ये भी पता है इसके थ्री स्टेजेस होते हैं जी एस एल वी की अगर हम बात करें थ्री स्टेजेस होते हैं फर्स्ट स्टेज इज सॉलिड सेकेंड इज लिक्विड एंड थर्ड स्टेज इज क्रायोजेनिक राइट दीज आर द थ्री स्टेजेस वी हैव इफ यू टॉक अबाउट द पी एस एल वी दो दिस इज नॉट द टॉपिक टूडेज टॉपिक बट इफ इट पोलो सिंक्रोनस लॉन्च वहीकल तो इनके चार स्टेजेस होते हैं पी एस एल वी हैज़ फोर स्टेजेस आई एम टेलिंग यू दिस द डिफरेंस बिटवीन द स्टेज ऑफ पी एस एल वी एंड जी एस एल वी बिकॉज यू पी एस सी आज दिस यू पी एस सी ने डायरेक्ट स्टेटमेंट दिया था कि जी एस एल वी के फोर स्टेजेस होते हैं पी एस एल वी के तीन स्टेजेस होते हैं या कुछ तो आई आई डोंट रिमेंबर कि उन्होंने स्टेटमेंट को एक्सचेंज किया था या नहीं बट दे हैव गिवन द स्टेटमेंट अबाउट द स्टेजेस ऑफ जी एस एल वी एंड पी एस एल वी सो यू मस्ट रिमेंबर दिस फैक्ट इज वेल ऑल राइट सो अबाउट सो नाउ दैट वी हैव अंडरस्टूड एच एस टू हंड्रेड वी वुड ऑल्सो वी शुड ऑल्सो नो कि ये गगन यान एग्जैक्टली है क्या एंड वॉट वर इट्स ऑब्जेक्टिव ओके सो द फर्स्ट थिंग दैट इट इट गॉट फर्स्ट दिस एंटायर प्रोजेक्ट गॉट अप्रूव्ड इन टू थाउजेंड एटीन तो ये काफ़ी पुराना है एंड एक्चुअली जो मेजर इसका पर्पज था टू वॉज टू सेंड द क्रू और ह्यूमन्स एक्चुअली इट वॉज डिसाइडेड कि तीन ह्यूमन बींग्स को थ्री ह्यूमन बींग्स को विल सेंड टू द स्पेस ठीक है बाई ट्वेंटी ट्वेंटी टू बट ये हो नहीं पाया ड्यू टू कोविड नाउ वी हैव पॉस्पॉन्डेड इट टू नेक्स्ट ईयर तो दैट्स 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 टोटली फाइन बट यू नीड टू रिमेंबर कि एग्जैक्टली हमने इसमें करने की क्या कोशिश करी है सो वी हैव इट विल सेंड थ्री मेम्बर्स मेम्बर क्रू टू दी स्पेस राइट एंड इंडिया विल बिकम फोर्थ कंट्री टू डू सो और हमसे पहले ये uh, कर चुका है रशिया यू एस एंड China, right? And it will be cheapest manned space flight to the world. This point also you have to remember, right? And हम जो अपने astronauts को बोल रहे हैं वो worm nots बोल रहे हैं because worm का मतलब होता है space. अगर हम संस्कृत की बात करें तो, right? Now talking about certain benefits of Gaganyaan. So the statement there there was a statement which our honorable prime minister gave, which was a son or a daughter of India will go to space from Indian soil by an Indian vehicle. So this you have to remember. Son of a, a son or a daughter of India will go to space from Indian soil by Indian vehicle by 2022. Seventy oh, fifth year of uh, uh, independence, Azadi ka Amrit Mahotsav. We are already celebrating. We are into it. We all know that. ठीक है. But ये COVID की वजह से as I've told you. But that's not uh, really important. We are trying it. That's important. ठीक है. We we have we have uh, you know we have made it at the cheap. We have made it at cheapest manned space flights. So we should be really proud of it. Okay. Talking about some of the benefits. The first one is it enhances the science and technology levels in the country. Definitely. Research के मामले में काफी ज़्यादा हम advance होने वाले हैं if we keep doing certain projects. Next, we have national projects involving other institutes, academia, or industry. Then it will also improve the industrial growth because uh, you know um, contracts to in where he will go. Then we have it will also in inspire the youth of our country to take up more scientific research and to take up to come into the field of the science and technology or uh, space. You can say technologies developed for societal benefits. ठीक है सो बहुत सारे सोसाइटी के बेनिफिट्स के लिए भी हम टेक्नोलॉजीज डेवलप कर सकते हैं आगे जाके ओके देन एडिशनल एच आर डी ह्यूमन रिसोर्स डेवलपमेंट एंड नेक्स्ट वन इज इट आल्सो प्रोवाइड्स वे फॉर इंटरनेशनल कोलाबोरेशन एंड पॉलिसीज ऑफ कोर्स इफ वी विल डू गुड इंटरनेशनल कोलाबोरेशन की भी काफ़ी ज़्यादा उम्मीदें बढ़ जाती हैं एंड इंटरनेशनल कोलाबोरेशन वी कैन ऑल्सो डू फॉर दी 
you know, for better enhancement of our own technology. So that's again one point you can say. Okay. Up next we have 5G. 5G I. Recently, what has happened that uh, Prime Minister Narendra Modi recently opened India's first 5G test bed. Okay. ये हम समझेंगे which will allow startups and industrial companies to test their products locally eliminating the reliance on international facility so this is primarily the objective of it which you have to remember what exactly 5G is ye ek telecommunication network hai in short agar main aapko batau so it is just an interface technology 5G i jisko uh, is a telecommunication network right it will act as an alternative to 5G technologies theek hai usse pehle hum 5G technologies tak pahunch lete hain unke evolution ke bare mein dekh lete hain the 1G technology if we talk about it came in 1981 aur iska koi uh, uh, it has no on board स्टोरेज ठीक है टू जी केम इन नाइनटीन नाइनटी वन राइट इसमें भी कोई ऑन बोर्ड स्टोरेज नहीं था थ्री जी केम विथ ट्वेंटी वन पॉइंट सिक्स एम बी बी एस स्पीड इन द ईयर नाइनटीन नाइनटी एट आफ्टर लाइक सेवन ईयर्स देन फोर जी केम विद वन जी बी पी एस का स्पीड इन टू थाउजेंड एट एंड फाइनली फाइव जी विद ट्वेंटी जी बी पी एस का स्पीड इन टू थाउजेंड एटीन येट टू बी इंप्लीमेंटेड विद एट लॉट ऑफ at present theek hai with with more than 8 gb memory and more than 512 gb storage theek hai isi ko basically uh, you know aid karne ke liye this 5g i is here if you talk about the more more benefits of our, uh, of this particular technology so using this we will allow the telecos or the tele uh, uh, companies in the country to widen the 5g connectivity theek hai villages tak hum 5g connectivity ko pahuncha sake and this is also cost effective technology right or villages tak pahuncha sake so that so that there is no lag theek hai koi lag logo ko face na karna pade while they are working or doing anything theek hai challenges what are, could be the challenges of 5g are? challenges yahi ho sakte hain challenges actually uh, manufacturing companies ko aa sakte hain mobile uh, phones jo banati hain to unko apna kuch hardware software mein changes karne padenge for to 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 uh, make their uh, you know to make their product compatible with this technology so they can uh, face certain challenges right okay we've done with this right rfid tags next topic is rfid tags again kafi news mein tha rfid tag this technology particularly was there in news a lot of times aaj hum samjhenge ye technology hai kya aur hum ye kyu pad rahe hain definitely we'll see that as well कॉन्टेक्स्ट है आर एफ आई डी टैग विल नाउ बी यूज टू ट्रैक अमरनाथ पिलग्रिम्स ठीक है ताकि uh, हम उनको अच्छे से सिक्योरिटी प्रोवाइड कर सके आर एफ आई डी एग्जैक्टली क्या है आर एफ आई डी स्टैंड फॉर रेडियो फ्रिक्वेंसी आइडेंटिफिकेशन ये एक वायरलेस ट्रैकिंग सिस्टम है ठीक है वायरलेस ट्रैकिंग सिस्टम है राइट right? इसके दो टाइप्स होते हैं पैसिव एंड एक्टिव एक्टिव जो है जो यू नो बैटरीज यूज करके चलता है एक्टिव आर एफ आई डी और पैसिव आर एफ आई डी आर एक्टिवेटेड थ्रू द रीडर यूजिंग इलेक्ट्रोमैग्नेटिक एनर्जी इट ट्रांसमिट तो वो यू नो अपना खुद का पावर सोर्स यूज नहीं करता है ओके सी दिस दिस इज हाउ इट वर्क सो दिस यू कैन सी इज आर एफ आई डी रीडर ठीक है इट इज कनेक्टेड टू एंटीना एज यू कैन सी हियर वी कनेक्टेड विद एंटीना ठीक है एंड इट इट रिसीव द डेटा फ्रॉम आर एफ आई डी टैग राइट आर एफ आई डी टैग से ये रिसीव करता है इंफॉर्मेशन देन वॉट हैपन्स Data is transmitted into RFID database where it can be stored and evaluated. RFID tag की अगर हम बात करें ये RFID tag आई टैग है जो आपको इट इज अटैच टू एस एड टू ट्रांसमिट स्टोर डेटा टू दी एंटीना राइट और ये वापस इसको देगा इट विल ट्रांसमिट टू इट एंड एंटीना एज वी ऑन लो इट रिसीव द स्टोर डेटा फ्रॉम द टैग एंड ट्रांसमिट द डेटा टू एन आर एफ आई डी रीडर विच इज दिस राइट दैट इज हाउ इट वर्कस up next we have respiratory syncytial virus so after covid um, there uh, has been uh, a lot of uh, news about these viruses and a lot of viruses were there in the news again in this segment of us we will be reading about this particular virus and i'll straight take you to this slide wherein we'll understand how exactly or what are the causes of this virus what could be the preventions of this and uh, again what are the you know symptoms of it so first thing first it is a common respiratory virus that often results in what 
माइल्ड कोल्ड लाइक सिम्टम्स बट कैन लीड अप टू सीरियस इलनेस ऑल्सो कौन से एज ग्रुप में ये ज्यादा कॉमन होता है कौन से एज ग्रुप में चाइल्ड राइट इट इन्फेक्ट द नोज थ्रॉट लंग्स एंड ब्रीदिंग पैसेज एंड इज स्प्रेड थ्रू कॉन्टैक्ट विद इन्फेक्टेड पर्सन सो इट इज अ कम्युनिकेबल डिजीज इज वेल और बाय टचिंग अ कंटामिनेटेड सर्फेस एंड देन बाय टचिंग योर आईज नोज और माउथ इट इज ऑल्सो टिपिकली सर्क्यूलेट्स विद अदर सीजनल रेस्पिरेटरी वायरसेस राइट लाइक कोविड वायरस एंड कोविड एंड फ्लू राइट इफ यू टॉक अबाउट सम ऑफ द सिम्टम्स तो कफिंग स्नीजिंग रनिंग नोज फीवर ये सिम्टम्स हैं इसके ओके उसके अलावा विच एज ग्रुप लाइक आई हैव ऑलरेडी टोल्ड यू इज एट द मेजर रिस्क प्री मेच्योर इन्फेंस इन्फेंस एट सिक्स मंथ्स या उससे भी जो छोटे बच्चे होते हैं दे आर एट दी ग्रेटर रिस्क देन इंडिविजुअल विद क्रॉनिक हर्ट या लंग डिजीज किसी भी एज ग्रुप को अगर लंग डिजीज से वो ऑलरेडी दे आर सफरिंग सो दिस वायर वायरस हैज यू नो इज गोइंग टू हार्म दैम इवन मोर और दे विल मोर लाइकली टू get infected from this virus then we have individual with compromised immune system and older ad adults next we have help prevent rsv or what could be the preventions of this partic from this particular virus so like uh, like uh, there are prevention in any other viral disease you need to wash your hands properly and uh, regularly you need to clean uh, uh, your frequently touched space to jis bhi cheez ko aap touch kar rahe hain you need to clean it you need to clean your hands and avoid close contact with the others who may be sick or just stay at your home wear mask right cover your coughs and sneezes right so this was it अगर हम कुछ डेटास की बात करें सो इट इज अ लीडिंग कॉज फॉर इन्फेंस के हॉस्पिटलाइजेशन का ये एक लीडिंग कॉज है नॉट जस्ट हॉस्पिटलाइजेशन इट कैन आल्सो लीड टू डेथ सो यूपीएससी कैन आस्क यू दैट इफ इट इज फेटल येस इट कैन बी फेटल इफ इट इट कैन बी फेटल ओके सो हाँ जी सो दिस वॉज अबाउट इट इफ आई टेक यू टू द प्रीवियस स्लाइड द नेक्स्ट द द वन पॉइंट विच आई वॉन्ट टू टॉक अबाउट इज दिस वन कि देर इज अ एंटी वायरल ड्रग ऑल्सो अगेंस्ट इट सो इट इज अवेलेबल सो दिस ऑल्सो कुड बी अ पोटेंशियल क्वेश्चन इफ देर इज एनी एंटी वायरल ड्रग अवेलेबल अगेंस्ट इट और नॉट सो येस देर इज एन वायरल ड्रग एंटी वायरल ड्रग विच इज अवेलेबल अगेंस्ट इट ऑल राइट चलिए दिस इज ऑल अबाउट दिस नेक्स्ट ऑफ वी हैव मोजाम्बिक कन्फर्म्स फर्स्ट वाइल पोलियो पोलियो वायरस केस इन थर्टी ईयर्स इससे पहले नाइजीरिया में यू you नो know, हमें ये मिला था ये केस अब हमें मोजाम्बिक में मिला है ठीक है मोजाम्बिक में ये केस मिला है राइट विल ट्राई एंड अंडरस्टैंड पोलियो है क्या और किसी भी कंट्री को हम पोलियो फ्री कब डिक्लेयर कर सकते हैं दिस ऑल्सो विल अंडरस्टैंड बट बिफोर दैट आई वॉन्ट टू आस्क यूर क्वेश्चन अबाउट इंडिया अबाउट आर कंट्री डू यू नो इफ इंडिया इज अ पोलियो फ्री कंट्री और नॉट येस वी आर अ पोलियो फ्री कंट्री एंड वी गॉट दिस टैग इन टू थाउजेंड फोर्टीन दो हजार चौदह में वी बिकेम पोलियो फ्री कंट्री और राइट जस्ट लुक एट जस्ट हैव अ लुक एट दिस तो वॉट इज पोलियो Poliomyelitis is a highly infectious viral disease, mainly affecting the children. So, first factual point: it caused it is caused by virus. Next, according to WHO, the virus is transmitted from person to person, mainly through the fecal oral route. So, this is the transmission process. It uh, the transmission uh, how it trans transmits. स्ट्रेन्स की अगर हम बात करें तो तीन स्ट्रेन्स होते हैं पोलियो के P1, P2 पी टू एंड पी थ्री और जो ये क्वेश्चन अभी हमने पीछे देखा था कि इसका एलिमिनेट हम कब वेन इज अ कंट्री डिक्लेयर पोलियो फ्री तो किसी भी कंट्री को डिक्लेयर करने के लिए पोलियो फ्री ये जो तीनों स्ट्रेन हैं P1, P2 टू एंड पी थ्री ये तीन स्ट्रेन हैं पोलियो के इन तीनों स्ट्रेन को खत्म होना पड़ता है तभी हम किसी भी कंट्री को पोलियो फ्री फ्री डिक्लेयर कर सकते हैं और हमारे कंट्री में पिछले तीन साल से आई मीन 2014 से पहले तीन साल जो थे उनमें कोई भी केस रिपोर्ट नहीं किया गया एंड फाइनली देन वी गॉट दिस रिकॉग्निशन ऑफ पोलियो फ्री कंट्री राइट ओके तो P2 को तो हमने वैसे ही ग्लोबली इराडिकेट कर दिया था 1990 में ही सो ग्लोबली इराडिकेशन इसका हो चुका है और इंडिया में भी हमने टू में वी हैव अटेन दस ऑफ पोलियो फ्री कंट्री राइट now if you talk about certain other things about, uh, regarding polio then polio is highly contagious disease we know this right and it can be uh, uh, it can be transmitted in drinking water contaminated with feces infection and destruction of anterior horn cells of spinal cord agar hum uska aise hi exposure uh, uh, i mean uh, 
डिस्ट्रक्शन करते हैं और उससे हमें इन्फेक्शन हो सकता है 90 परसेंट के पास कोई सिम्टम्स नहीं होते हैं 90 परसेंट लोगों में कोई सिम्टम्स नहीं दिखाई देते हैं 10 परसेंट सिम्टम्स में फ्लू लाइक सिम्टम्स आपको दिखाई देंगे और 0.5 परसेंट में पैरालिसिस आपको होगा तो पैरालिसिस एक्सट्रीम केसेस में आपको देखने को मिलता है जनरली पैरालिसिस आपको नहीं देखने को मिलेगा बट एक्सट्रीम केसेस में यू माइट फाइन दिस राइट एंड दिस वायरस रेप्लीकेट्स इन द इंटेस्टाइन दिस कुड ऑल्सो बी अ पॉसिबल क्वेश्चन इन योर एग्जामिनेशन वेयर एग्जैक्टली इट रेप्लीकेट इट रेप्लीकेट इन द इंटेस्टाइन ऑफ द ह्यूमन बींग्स राइट सो दीज आर फ्यू थिंग्स रिगार्डिंग पोलियो विच यू कैन रिमेंबर या जस्ट वन मोर थिंग If we talk about the vaccines or the treatment or the prevent preventions, though we we have already talked about. If I talk about the medical, uh, you know, uh, uh, treatment. So OPV vaccines, which is oral polio vaccines, oral polio vaccines, we give to our children below five years, right? So at six weeks, ten weeks, and fourteen weeks, we uh, give to the children. IPV we give to them at six weeks and fourteen weeks, or OPV booster we give to them between sixteen to twenty-four months to a child, right? So this is a vaccination schedule of OPV, uh, OPV and the IPVs. Up next, we have global report on assistive te technology. Again. two three things like i like i always say that whenever it comes to a report or any statistics we must first remember that who exactly releases the particular report and here in this case who world health organization and unicef have released the first global report on assistive technology since this is the first global report on assistive technology this becomes important for our examination too we call it great theek hai so they can ask you who releases it who plus unicef aur ye pehli report hai isliye bhi important ho jati hai what is assistive technology we all know ki bahut sare uh, old people mein bahut sari uh, you know um, disabilities hoti hain right unhi disabilities ko cure karne ke liye we came up with this assistive technology what is exactly assistive so as the name indicate indicates it is to assist the old people in their disabilities what exactly it is it is an item or piece of equipment or software program so it is not just a piece of equipment remember it can even be a software program jinki jiski wajah se ya jiske through hum assist kar sakte hain in the elder the uh, older older people not the elder rather older people or the product system that is used to help people with disabilities increase maintain or improve their functions abilities what are the key findings of this report great jo ye report hai by who and unicef is report ne exactly kya फाइन किया है की फाइंडिंग्स क्या है ओवर 2.5 बिलियन इंडिविजुअल रिक्वायर वन और मोर असिस्टिव आइटम्स दिस इज व्हाट दे फाउंड उसके अलावा बिलियन ऑफ पीपल आर डिनाइड एक्सेस इतने सारे लोगों को तो डिनाई कर दिया जाता है एक्सेस सो इट वाज ऑल द मोर इंपॉर्टेंट टू ब्रिंग सच टेक्नोलॉजी इन यूज सो दैट देयर प्रॉब्लम्स कुड आल्सो बी एड्रस्ड particularly in low and middle income countries next we have the number of persons in need of assistive devices are predicted to reach 3.5 billion by 2050 so the number what, what we have right now is going to increase so much by 2050 so it's better that we solve it or start doing something about it from now onwards only right then only will be able to achieve what we are supposed to achieve okay so next yeah so that was about it key recommendations ki agar hum baat kare so key recommendations wahi hai that uh, we must uh, you know provide affordable so affordable assistive technology hame provide karni chahiye at hame provide karna chahiye along with this uh, awareness and education is also the need of the r when we talk about the disabilities pertaining to the older people to uski bhi zarurat hai in the younger generation especially so that they can help at their best level okay next we have nasa voyager mission nasa ka ek voyager mission hai kafi kafi purana hai it's like very old uh, again two three things what is the present context of it and what was the you know what was the history of it why uh, what was the uh, basic aim of this particular mission so these two questions we are going to deal with in this particular segment let's see recently what has happened nasa's voyager 1 is continuing its journey beyond our solar system so this is something you need to remember that it is for it is for solar system theek hai to uh, outer solar system ko read karne ke liye basically ye bheja gaya tha 45 years after it was launched it was before 45 years 
but now the veteran spacecraft is sending back strange data and puzzling its engineer so we are facing so nasa is prob uh, facing certain problems and that is precisely why it was in news but i feel uh, what's what's important for us to understand is to see the historical background of this mission so it was launched in 70s 1970s i'm talking about and the probes sent by nasa were only meant to explore what the outer planet so this is again you need to remember it was for what meant for what to read the outer planets but they just kept on going okay voyager 1 departed earth on uh, 1977 a few days after voyager 2 and uh, left our solar system in 2013 what were the accomplishments jo ab tak achieve kari hai voyager nasa uh, i mean uh, nasa voyager mission ne so voyager 2 is the only probe ever to study the neptune and uranus during planetary flybys and it is the second man made objective to leave our solar system i want all of you to have a look at a picture but before that voyager 2 is the only spacecraft you must remember to have visited all four gas giant plants uh, planets i'm sorry uh, jo bhi giant uh, planets hain which are uh, jupiter se jo start hote hain jupiter saturn uranus neptune yeah see this we have done 1770 hum ye kar chuke hain yahan par kuch terms hain jo aapko yaad rakhni hai voyager 2 se related i mean voyager mission se related kuch aise terms hain jo i want all of you to remember like for example helio sheath helio sheath kya hoti hai so this is helio sheath where area where where solar wind interact with the interstellar space and current location of both the voyagers is this only ठीक है वॉयजर टू हमने पढ़ लिया 1770 में लॉन्च हुआ था एंड हेलियोस्फेयर एज यू कैन सी इज हियर द इट इज लाइक अ बबल अराउंड द सन क्रिएटेड बाय व्हाट क्रिएटेड बाय द विंड्स द सोलर विंड्स ठीक है सो ये एक uh, आप आप याद रख सकते हैं कुछ टर्मिनोलॉजीज जो वॉयजर मिशन से रिलेटेड हैं ओके चलिए आर्ट एंड कल्चर आर्ट एंड कल्चर इज दी लास्ट पेपर जो हम अभी करंट अफेयर से रिलेटेड हम दो तीन टॉपिक्स इसमें पढ़ेंगे फर्स्ट इज बुद्ध पूर्णिमा बुद्ध पूर्णिमा के बारे में कुछ चीजें जान लेते हैं लेट्स सी बुद्ध पूर्णिमा हमने सिक्सटींथ मई को सेलिब्रेट किया टू मार्क दी बर्थ एनिवर्सरी हमें पता है गौतम बुद्ध बुद्धा की जो एनिवर्सरी होती है उसको सेलिब्रेट करते हैं हम इट इज ऑल्सो बिलीव टू बी द डे ही अटेन सेलिब्रेशन या फिर निर्वाणा इनको मिला था अंडर द महाबोधि ट्री जो कि अभी प्रेजेंटली बोध गया में सिटुएटेड है राइट right? इनको हम वैसक भी कहते थे और 1999 में इट बिकेम यू एन डेजिग्नेटेड डे टू एक्नोलेज द कॉन्ट्रीब्यूशन ऑफ बुद्धिज्म टू द सोसाइटी राइट सो यू एन ऑल्सो हैज गिवन इट अ स्टेटस और रिकग्नाइज इट राइट ओके गौतम बुद्धा के लाइफ के बारे में जान लेते हैं तो इनका बर्थ और डेथ डेट्स आर अननोन एक्चुअली दो वी हैव दो डेट्स जो एन में मैंशन है वो हमें अपने एग्जाम के लिए याद रखनी होती है so most historians place his birth between 563 to 483 bc and this is the date we have to remember for examination perspective and he is believed to be the ninth incarnation of lord vishnu right or um, as per vedic literature mein ye mentioned hai and he was born as siddhartha gautam inka jo real name tha wo siddhartha gautam uh, lumbini mein ye paida hue the sakhya clan mein ye paida hue the few of the facts jo ki aapke ncrts mein bhi available hain aur ye important bhi hai because buddhism jainism we know we know are one of those favorite topics of upsc from art and culture perspective theek hai places ki agar hum kuch places dekh lete hain which are associated with his life so he attained enlightenment humne pad liya under bodhi tree under a people tree at bodh gaya bihar buddha gave its first sermon in a village of sarnath near varanasi उत्तर प्रदेश ठीक है एंड दिस इवेंट इज नोन एज धर्म चक्र परिवर्तन दे कैन डायरेक्टली समटाइम्स आई डोंट थिंक दे विल आस्क यू सच इजी क्वेश्चन दीज डेज बट दे कैन गिव यू दिस मैच इन द फॉलोइंग वाले क्वेश्चन में दैट धर्म चक्र परिवर्तन इज रिलेटेड टू वॉट सो इट इज लाइक इट इज इट इज टर्निंग ऑफ द व्हील ऑफ लॉ इंग्लिश में इफ यू ट्रांसलेट इट ऑन ही डाइड इन कुशी नगर ओके ऑल राइट so these are the council buddhist councils i thought to put this because uh, again they ask you questions upsc and uh, especially a lot of state pscs also wo to directly questions puch lete hain so first buddhist council 500 bc kahan par hui rajgriha mein hui the spelling is incorrect but the place you have to remember rajgriha theek hai ajat satru ne isko preside uh, ajat satru was the rule and it was presided by maha kashyap right next hua 383 एटी थ्री बी सी में वैशाली में सो द प्लेस आर इम्पॉर्टेंट थर्ड काउंसिल पाटलिपुत्र देन देन कश्मीर 
फोर ओनली यू कैन रिमेंबर फिफ्थ एंड सिक्स आर नॉट दैट इंपॉर्टेंट बट आप चार याद रखिए कनिष्का के टाइम में ये हुई थी थर्ड जो है आपकी अशोका के टाइम में हुई थी सेकेंड आपकी काल अशोका के टाइम में हुई थी फोर्थ में जो हुआ था वो काफ़ी इंपॉर्टेंट है क्योंकि यहाँ पर हीनयान और महायान में डिवीजन हुआ था ठीक है दैट इज वाई इट इज द मोस्ट इंपॉर्टेंट वन राइट थर्ड में जो आपका हुआ था थर्ड काउंसिल में द पर्पज वॉज टू रिकनसाइल द डिफरेंट स्कूल्स ऑफ बुद्धिज्म ठीक है और मोगाली पुत्र तिस्सा ने इसको प्रिसाइड करा था राइट सेकेंड में द कॉन्जर्वेशन स्कूल्स इंसिस्टेड ऑन मनास्टिक रूल्स ठीक है एंड दीज सेशनिस्ट महासंगिकास आर्ग्यूड फॉर मोर रिलैक्स मोनास्टिक रूल्स राइट फर्स्ट में वी नो की रिकॉर्ड द फर्स्ट एक्ट फर्स्ट वन द फर्स्ट काउंसिल रिकॉर्ड दी बुद्धा सेंग एंड कोडिफाई मोनास्टिक रूल्स ठीक है तो ये कुछ आउटकम्स थे इन काउंसिल्स के इन मीटिंग्स थे के विच यू हैव टू रिमेंबर देर इज नो अदर ऑप्शन देन क्रैमिंग देम तो आपको ये याद ही करना पड़ेगा कुछ समझने का इसमें ज़्यादा कुछ है नहीं अब नेक्स्ट वी हैव पूरी हेरिटेज कॉरिडोर अगेन टू थ्री पॉइंट्स यू नीड टू रिमेंबर कुछ ज़्यादा समझने का नहीं है दीज आर फ्यू ऑफ दोज फैक्चुअल टॉपिक्स यू हैव टू रिमेंबर ओनली एंड रिवाइज इट बिफोर योर प्रेलम्स एग्जामिनेशन ताकि आप आपको याद रहे ये रिसेंटली रिसेंटली आर्कोलॉजिकल सर्वे ऑफ इंडिया ने ओडिशा में दस ओडिशा स्टेट गवर्नमेंट वॉज कंस्ट्रक्टिंग द पूरी हेरिटेज कॉरिडोर ठीक है प्रोजेक्ट विदाउट प्रॉपर लाइसेंस राइट इन प्रोटेक्टेड एंड कंट्रोल्ड एरियाज ऑफ मोन्यूमेंट तो ए एस आई ने अभी ये बोला है कि ओडिशा गवर्नमेंट इज डूइंग सम इलीगल वर्क देर तो इसीलिए ये न्यूज में आया है एंड दे हैव कंप्लेन अगेंस्ट इट सो बट for us uh, for our examination perspective what is important is to understand about the corridor itself about this entire project itself so let's see the first of question or the first doubt is clear by the first statement itself that it is situated in odisha right and it got uh, it it conceived in 2016 the project aims to transform the holy town of puri into a international place of heritage taki tourism bad sake right tourism and then further economy also will boost but that's precisely the agenda behind making this corridor and the project includes redevelopment of so many areas like for example puri lake musa river theek hai to in sab ko revive karne ka bhi plan hai isme temple ki baat kare puri jagannath temple ki baat kare agar hum to isko construct kisne kiya tha vaishnavites temple hum isko bolte hain it is ded dedicated to jagannath theek hai who is a form of shri krishna right and the temple is believed to have been constructed in 12th century by the king anant varmam चोड़ा गंगा चोर गंगा ठीक है देवा ऑफ द ईस्टर्न गंगा डायनेस्टी तो ये आप याद रखें गंगा डायनेस्टी के रूल ने रूरल ने रू आई मीन किंग ने इसको बनवाया था एंड दिस इज आल्सो कॉल्ड यामनिका तीर्था ठीक है वेयर अकॉर्डिंग टू द हिंदू बिलीव द पावर ऑफ याम याम मतलब डेथ uh, गॉड को जो हम बोलते हैं हैज बिन नलीफाइड इन पूरी ड्यू टू द प्रेजेंस ऑफ लोड जगन्नाथ ठीक है और यहाँ पर एक फेमस रथ यात्रा भी होती है वी ऑल आर अवेयर ऑफ वी ऑल मस्ट हैव सीन दोज ग्रैंड फोटोज ऑफ द यथ रथ यात्रा द जगन्नाथ रथ यात्रा राइट सो दैट वाज ऑल अबाउट दिस वीक्स करंट अफेयर आई होप इट वाज रियली हेल्पफुल टू यू वी विल कम अप अगेन विद द फोर्थ वीक करंट अफेयर टिल देन स्टेट यून थैंक यू सो मच